Hi, everybody. We are going to get started right away. I'll give people like 30 seconds to join. Thank you for people in Europe who said they're staying up late. Hopefully, you'll find this worth your time. So I'm going to just start off with my usual beginning stuff. And then I'm going to get into reading of the transcript from the October 19th in chambers hearing. Um, and then we'll talk about that and, and other stuff. So let me just go through my first rules. Obviously, first and foremost, always remember this is about Abby and Libby. Something horrible happened in the woods, uh, unfortunately, on February 13th, 2017. And hopefully we'll find out who Bridge Guy is right now. Rick is the one who's been accused, and we're going to have to wait till the trial to see all of the evidence against Rick before I think any of us can make a final decision. So just want to make sure people don't forget Abby and Libby. My chat rules, previously I've put it on slow mode because some people complain that the chat goes by way too quick. Previously I've done it at 30 seconds between messages, but sometimes people complain that they write a message and then 25 messages later is their second part of their thoughts. So I'm trying 10 seconds between messages, so we'll see how that works. I do have it as subscribers only to chat. I'm not trying to get subscribers, but it's just to slow down the chat and hopefully prevent any trolls or spam. As always, everybody is entitled to share your different opinions, but please be polite to everybody else or the moderators will, moderators will ban you. Bye. Um, anyway, uh, do not hate other people who have different theories or suspects than you do. I've heard that Judge Go is has been in the hospital. Some people are saying nasty things just because you don't agree with her doesn't mean you should hope that somebody has bad health issues. So if anybody's saying anything nasty about Judge Gull's health in the comments, moderators, feel free to ban them. If I don't highlight your comment, which everybody knows, I, last time I fell an hour and a half behind on comments, it doesn't mean I disagree with you or I dislike you. I just, everybody knows I fall far behind. In the top left of the chat, if you're looking at it, you'll see it says top chat, but you can change that to live chat if you want to see every single comment. One final drink for my Taco Bell cup. I try not to curse, but I can't promise anything. So here we go. What am I doing here? Um, <laughs> stop screen. <laughs> and we have two guests here who are gonna help me read. I asked my members before, will anybody read um, some of these parts with me from this transcript? And Purdue RN was nice enough to read Judge Gull. Yeah. Hi, Purdue. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Thanks for joining. Uh -oh. and Deb's True Crime Notebook. <laughs> Thank you. She's going to be reading the part of Andrew Baldwin. Ooh. Hi, Deb. <laughs> and De Deb has her own True Crime channel. If you guys, I just put a link in there if you want to subscribe to her. Let me present the Word document that we're going to read from. Actually, we're, uh, let's see. Okay, so we're going to be on screen. Deb, I can hear you, correct? Yeah, I hope so. Can you okay, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And okay, before so we get started, I just want to say thank you to you for helping me to reach a thousand subscribers. You're because welcome. Because you sent me a ton. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for all the effort you put in. Yeah. Deb is good. She put any updates on the case, she pretty much puts it up on the same day within a few hours. So she's definitely a good resource for Delphi updates. Okay. So here we go. October 19th was this court hearing where it says in camera, but it means like the, in the judge's chambers. So we've been wondering for, I guess, over a month, what was said in this chambers meeting. So I think yesterday or the day before they released the court reporter recording. So I went through it and I say up here, this is a mix of actual quotes and my summary trying to decrease the total word count because it was a total of 29 pages. So yeah. I didn't want to just keep going on and on. So I did not omit anything to push a particular narrative in favor of, in favor of Judge Gall, the state or the defense, just to be clear. They referenced the Sixth Amendment for anybody who does not know what that is, including me, guarantees the rights of criminal defendants, including the right to a public trial without necessary delay, I'm sorry, without unnecessary delay, the right to a lawyer, the right to an impartial jury, and the right to know who your accusers are and the nature of the charges and evidence against you. 
Deb and Purdue, can you read what's on the screen or do I have to make it bigger? Yeah, I, I've got it up on my laptop. So we're good. Purdue, you're okay? I'm okay. Thank you. So I actually have to go to Word to actually um, scan down. So let's see. So I'm going to be Nick, Slick Nick, Mick, McClelland, <laughs> the prosecutor. Um, I'm going to be Rosie, also one of the defense lawyers. Purdue is going to be Judge Gall, and Deb will be Andrew Baldwin. So it started off, some, like I said, some of these are summaries, some are the quotes. We're going to, this is 10 pages total. It's probably going to take us maybe, I don't know, 20 minutes. So if you've already read this, you might want to go watch cat videos or something. <laughs> so Nick McClelland introduced James Luttrell, who will be helping Nick McClelland after the um, Carroll County Council approved another special prosecutor. If I remember after this, I actually made a screenshot of James Luttrell and a little bit about his experience. So Rosie, this is um, Deb and Purdue. If it says quote, please say quote and end quote, just pe so people know that it was a direct quote. Thank you. Okay. So well, Rosie, well, I'm the one that kind of asked to huddle up. So if you want me to lead, or if you want to say some things, I'm okay with whatever approach you want to take here. Stated they have a court report, so they will have a record of the discussion. Um, if you can just say at the beginning too, like just say Gull, Judge Gull stated. Will do. Thank you. Okay. So Rosie said, I'm happy the court's going to make some decisions on the pending pleadings today. Gull stated, uh-huh. Rosie, okay. I assume Andy feels the same way. It's time to get closure with regard to those items so we can move forward. Uh -oh. It's probably obvious that the tension from our side is coming from the words, quote unquote, disqualification that were murmured in the phone conference we had a couple weeks ago. I'm assuming you understand how that raises the intensity level of the circumstances. My concern today is that we're gonna go out in the public courtroom on the record and have a discussion about an ongoing investigation. That's what I kind of gathered from the email. I think you invited Nick to talk about that if he wanted to. Go, uh-huh. So Rosie followed up. It makes me a little uncomfortable because I don't know. First of all, there are no pleadings that are pending, whether they're motions to disqualify or contempt citations or whatever they might be. That really frame, sorry, I might've messed up. That really doesn't frame any of the issues. I might've messed up, sorry. Tom makes mistakes sometimes. I don't have any problem talking about this stuff privately on the record in a, you know, in an ex parte type confidential hearing it's difficult to expect that there will be any kind of structure to the idea of, quote, hey, there's an ongoing investigation and just tell us what's going on, end quote. And I don't know that it has that it has any relevance to what we're really trying to accomplish today. I also don't know why Nick would want to talk about an ongoing investigation in public. N know that that in itself could be a little damaging to their circumstances. So we're lawyers. We're used to having issues framed and an opportunity to prepare. I don't have anything to hide, and I know he, I think he's referring to Baldwin, doesn't have anything to hide. To hide, we've, cooper we've cooperated and ran into the state police posts, and I had somebody advise me of my rights, and I waived those and gave a formal statement. He did the same, I think referring to Baldwin. I'm not sure we're gonna benefit or this will be productive to just open floor this and that's my biggest concern today. Okay, so Rosie continued, sorry. Un so Rosie was unsure of what would be discussed in the open court about the leak investigation or other issues to possibly disqualify Rosie and Baldwin. Gull, uh-huh. Baldwin, I'm more of a like the due process side. I'm not really sure what will happen. And I would like the opportunity to know what's going to happen and prepare for their claiming or whatever it happens. I feel like I don't want to be ambushed, but it's just hard to know what to do when I don't know what's happening. There's not a plea we can respond to, things like that. You had indicated when Nick said, I don't know if he said the word disqualification, but... Gull. Oh, he did. Baldwin. Was it that word? Gull, uh-huh. Baldwin, I don't know if he just said it in a more generic way. 
aha uh-huh, negative response. Go. Baldwin. And your response was, you know, I'm leaning in that direction or something along those lines. Go. Uh-huh. Baldwin. That's a cause of concern. We're still wanting to try this case in January 2024, and we've made changes at the office, at my office, that will present prevent this from ever happening again. We can take directives from the court, and we're locking down every single thing on the Delphi. It's in the dedicated room, and we put locks on the conference room where this guy went, my friend, went in and, you know, did this without my knowledge. No document, whether it's benign or something super, you know, like a crime scene photo is ever going to be left alone for a single solitary second ever again. And I'm hoping that that can be something the court can say, all right, it's fine. And then let's get on with the trial. But I'll shut up now. Go. Anything, Nick? (laughs) Sorry, guys. I lost, I lost my camera. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, I'll read um, Nick. So Nick, uh, Nick planned to present in court a summary of the leak investigation, plus introduce witnesses and exhibits. I think most of us know that there were a lot of police there ready to testify. He had not yet turned um, these exhibits over to the defense, but was willing to, even if it meant, I'm oh, sorry, if it, even if it might harm the investigation. He thought it was important for the court to hear them that day on October 19th. He was concerned evidence showed it it was an sorry it was an ongoing leak and quote unquote what's next he spent the past 17 days night and day investigating the defense leak when he should have been preparing for rick's trial he was on phone calls at 2 a.m and 3 30 a.m rosie continued quote this is starting to scream due process to me end quote He has not seen exhibits and doesn't know anything about any of this since he has no connection to any of these people. I believe he's referring to anybody involved in the leak of the crime scene photos and strategy. Quote, the idea that somehow the prosecutor is going to get to roll out a bunch of statements and exhibits and, you know, testimony without us having any forewarning or any idea, any way of scrutinizing that seems a little outside the boundaries of due process to me, end quote. Why use the open courtroom to air an ancillary matter since it's not connected to the ongoing proceedings like Frank's issue or anything of that nature? So Rosie has 10 pages of um, Jerry Holman's deposition, which I think was from August of this past year. So Rosie has 10 pages of Holman's deposition talking about crime scene leaks since the beginning of the case, like non-law enforcement who distributed... uh, it was like non-law enforcement officers who distributed information to others, which might have been um, Abby's uncle has uh, was sending some texts about the crime scene to people that I think most of us have seen. So it gets passed from one person to another. Someone sent Rosie a court TV segment. He said he's never watched, quote unquote, one of those bits on this case where this reporter, which I think most of us know, Barbara McDonald, said she got crime scene details from law enforcement at the crime scene. Quote, it was corroborated by the fact that she was holding in her hand documents that I know to be directly related to the Purdue report. I saw the pictures. I know where those came from. I don't care that all this stuff is out there because it's been out there for five or six years, end quote. He's lost sleep over the suicide related to the leak. Baldwin. Baldwin. There's even a guy in Florida who says the guy in Texas who leaked all this stuff has received from a disgruntled Carroll County employee, a whole file filled with stuff and photos included. I haven't even seen the photos that were leaked. I don't know what they are. This is just a note that I wrote. How are they on this on uh, Baldwin's conference table and he hasn't seen them? How didn't Nick McClellan tell him a general idea of which ones there were that they were that leaked? Did he never ask for, did Baldwin never ask for a clarification? Um, so it's, I think this is Baldwin continued. He was okay with a future hearing when he could be more prepared and know what is uh, what is being presented. Quote, uh, this is Baldwin, just to be sure. This is the okay. worst, lowest point in my career right now because somebody did what they did to me and I, you know, that has nothing to do with Richard Allen, end quote. Gull, it certainly does not. Baldwin, Rick needs counsel. So Baldwin didn't want to go into the courtroom and not go and not be able to fight back with evidence against whatever witness state about the leak states about the leaks. Gull, quote, I certainly don't wish to air publicly to the world the concerns that I have about this matter. 
my intent in having this hearing was to go through some of the pleadings that we have not yet decided. I was going to start with reminding everyone about the decorum order, reminding everyone why we're here to shut up, et cetera, et cetera. There have been reports to my sheriff about disruptive people, and I will remind people if they are disruptive, they will be removed or arrested because I know we have seen in our other hearings people that have been disruptive and hateful, end quote. Quote, the defendant filed, or is this for you to read, Tom? Um, I think this, is, this was, I'm not sure, but I think this was Gull uh, continued. Okay. Uh, Gull continues, quote, defendant filed a verify motion for immediate transfer of custody. The state filled, uh, filed its response. The motion granted has, it has a lot of inaccuracies and some speculation. It has been refuted uh, ably. And I think the affidavits that have been submitted by the state, and I'm going to deny the motion, uh, end quote. Defense's broadcasting order, quote, your motion is overbroad. It has a lot of irrelevant verbiage in it, and I am required to consider the individual requests for the hearing. So I will, end quote, if the media wishes, they know how to do that. And um, this is just her uh, continuing. She's like going through the list of things that she was upset with the defense about. So there's these three more paragraphs for goal, please. Okay. The defense is welcome to file requests for broadcasting particular hearings, but the media knows how to request. She will decide on a hearing by hearing basis. State motion filed for the leave of court to subpoena third party records in parentheses Westville. Quote, I clearly can't grant that. Um, parentheses will grant the defense's motion to quash. But if you continue to raise his medical and mental health in pleadings, that's fair game to be provided to the state. NM, Nick McClellan, filed a motion for future hearings and filings to be sealed prior to being released to the public. But Gall had not received the defense's response. So Rosie replied, this discussion came up before and they are done They are done sealing things and want it public. Before they filed the Frank's brief, Tom, oh, I wrote, he calls 136 pages brief. Um, I'm kidding. He had a long conversation with a court reporter in Delphi because he wasn't sure about the mechanics of how all this stuff was moving from Delphi to your office, to Gull's office. He thought the process was the defense filed documents in Carroll County and Carroll County, quote, were hitting enter and they were sending it to you, Gull, and you were essentially filtering this stuff or at least you were seeing it before it became public, end quote. Gull, nope. Rosie, I think that is what happened to a pleading the other day. We filed something and you either put it in a queue or I tried to do some homework on that and that's what I... Baldwin. I was part of one of those conversations, and that's what she, Carroll County Court Reporter, said. Gull, does that need a hearing? I'm happy to have a hearing on that. Oh, so I spelled Rosie wrong. Oh, my gosh, what a disaster. Sorry. <laughs> Rosie, I don't really, just telling you for context. Baldwin, could there be a happy medium of we file it confidentially so the judge can review it first? Because that's what we thought was going on. Gull, quote, no, it's being filed confidentially if you mark it as such, end quote. Baldwin, quote, yeah, I know that, unquote. Gull, quote, I've had my staff mark the memorandum confidential after it had been filed and disseminated to the public because of the actual warrant that was in there. And that was covered under the miscellaneous cause number. I am happy to have a hearing, end quote. Rosie said, what is your ruling? I don't want to fight about something that we don't need to argue about. Gall, I haven't ruled on that. You haven't filed a response. Do we need a hearing? Do you wish to file a response? The Frank's motion needs a ruling, and I'm working on that. 
the motion and exhibits are about 1500 pages and there are hours and hours and hours of interview that have been made available and that my IT staff has now cleaned to make sure they're okay. That brings us to my concerns that I've raised on our phone call. And I write everything out, and this is what I intend to say in open court. I have concerns regarding the defense team and the totality of the circumstances surrounding your representation of Mr. Allen. Candidly, my concerns began at our hearing November 22nd of last year. Mr. McClellan filed a motion for a gag order, and you were in chambers, and you assured me, gentlemen, you don't want this. Uh, they said, we don't want this. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, is that a quote there? Yeah, Tom? sorry. Okay. It was an inside quote. Okay, inside quote. Um, we don't want this in the media in our lives, and we will not try this case in the media, end quote. In less than two weeks, you issued, issued an updated press release that contained an awful lot of information that would not normally be revealed. I don't know. I think you knew or should have known those were potentially volatile, uh, uh, violative of Rule 3.6 of the Rules of Professional Responsibility. But it, it is that press release that prompted me to issue an order on December 2nd, gra granting the gag order, April 18th, 2023. You filed a notice of a tort claim against the defense of uh, the Department of Corrections. You stated in that notice that you intend to pursue our client's claims against you. The full amount of damages sought on behalf of my client is unknown. Quote, I do... I don't know how you could be doing that and representing Mr. Allen in a criminal manner and then launch off into a civil manner. I think that's inappropriate. May of this year, you were notified by the state um, of um, Brandon Woodhouse arrest and that the subsequent discovery of your work product. And I think that was an outline that you created yourselves with discovery, it was pretty detailed. I don't know if that's the right word that apparently that happened in December of last year and that you had not revealed to anyone, not shared with the court. It was not shared with you, although apparently you guys knew what was going on. Baldwin says he didn't know. Gull, you knew. Baldwin says, I did know. So then Mr. Woodhouse gets arrested and here we are, grossly negligent to email that to the wrong Brad. Your pleadings on the safekeeping order contain inaccurate inaccuracies and falsehoods. That was proven in the hearing we conducted in June. The evidence presented by the state clearly demonstrated the falsity of your claims. And uh, that was very troubling to me. And then a couple, a couple of weeks that we had been dealing with, the state provided you with discovery that had been severely compromised. We now have an ongoing investigation. Everyone involved has sought counsel, including you, Mr. Baldwin. I'm glad to hear you have cooperated, but that Mr. Baldwin's attorney clearly has shared. I don't know if you have seen his pleading. Oh, Nick McLean said, I, I saw it. Gall, he's clearly shared it in his pleading down to the fact that an individual has committed suicide. He included that you left materials all over a conference room table accessible to anyone and that this a friend of yours who apparently you have consulted with on this case. So again, it's up to you. If you wish to pursue that, I am looking at the totality of the circumstances. When I look at a suppression, the case law requires me to look at the totality of the circumstances. And that's what I'm doing. 
and it pains me to say this, but the totality of these circumstances demonstrate gross negligence and incompetence on, on the part of the defense team. I am unsatisfied with your representation of Mr. Allen. I am gravely concerned about his rights to have a competent and non-negligent representation. He currently doesn't have that right now because you have demonstrated, what you have demonstrated is negligence and incompetence. Now I am sharing my thoughts with you privately. I don't want to say this in open court. I would encourage you to talk privately about what you wish to do. I don't want this coming out. It is not, not where we need to be with this case, but I will. But if you don't know that, you have just now been made aware of my concerns and what I am, um, I assume that means leading, leading? Where, where I'm leading, sorry. Yeah, yeah leading. where I'm leading. Thank you. So if you wish to have a private conversation, I would encourage you to do that. I don't believe your client is here yet. Uh, no, he's not. Clearly, you'll need to speak to him. Uh, as well. So Baldwin says, I'm not good at reading between the lines. Gull says, you're a lawyer. That's what you do for a living. Baldwin says, when you say have a private conversation, are you talking the four of us or? Gull, I'm talking about you. I am not accusing the state of gross incompetence and negligence. I am finding gross incompetent and negligence with you. So Rosie said, obviously reading the tea leaves here, what you're giving us a chance to do is bow out gracefully, if that's the right term. If Is there a scenario where the court would accept if I stayed on the case, in the case? I'm a team player and not the kind of guy that just bails out on somebody just for the sake of doing it. But I think it's obvious that he, Baldwin, can speak differently. But I'm not as connected to some of these most recent circumstances as he is. Rick is in a situation where he's going to have new counsel that will take a, uh, a year to get up to speed. So I think his Sixth Amendment rights matter. I'm probably the one that can move this thing forward with some sense of judicial economy. I don't like it, and that's not what I intended to do when I came in here today, but that would be kind of worst case scenario on our side. Is that an option? He didn't say Gull, that was mine. Is that an option Judge Gull or the court would entertain or would it offer people in Europe or who don't speak English as their uh, main language, entertain means agree to. Gull, no. Rosie, basically what you're saying is, quote, you guys either quit on your own accord or make me fire you, end quote. Gull, no. I'm saying this to you. This is what I plan to say in court on the record when we convene at 2 p.m. Rosie, is this the culmination of what you're removing us from the case? Oh, sorry, yeah. is the culmination of that you're removing us from the case? Gull, I will, based on what I just shared with you. Rosie said, okay, I just want to make sure we're... Gull, I'm just giving you the opportunity to have a conversation which, how do you feel you want that to go? I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this but I will if I have to. Baldwin says, how would, should we bow out gracefully? Would we even have a hearing? How would that go? Because if we're out of the case, then. Rosie said, then you're going to go ahead and rule on a bunch of stuff without lawyers in the room. That's. Gull, no, I wouldn't do that. If you decide that your best course of action is to file a motion to withdraw, you can do that today. I'll send Rick back to Westfield after you speak with him. Baldwin says, would that happen before or after the hearing? Gull, your motion to withdraw would happen before the hearing. Baldwin says, okay, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Gull, yeah, Rick has rights. I don't want those rights compromised by having a hearing with him not having counsel. I assume if you choose to withdraw that Rick's financial situation has not changed and he would still be entitled to a court appointed counsel. I can't imagine he has the 
um, ability to hire counsel. Um, I don't know that. Baldwin says, Brad and I need to go talk. Goal. Yes, you do. Thank you, gentlemen. So McClellan said, yep, thank you, Judge. And so they all took a break and then they came back and Rosie talks pretty long. So here we go. We're trying to figure out how to address this issue with very short notice. The first thing we did is really to talk to the client who is a big part of this. And he said he does not want us to withdraw as his attorneys. He understands, I think, that he's not the gatekeeper or doesn't have the authority to force the court to do that. He would like to say that on record. He asked, sorry, we asked him if that's what he wanted to do. We suggested maybe he do that, sorry, he do it in chambers. I wrote, these are some of my notes. I probably should have deleted this. So the world doesn't hear if Rick's voice matches bridge guy. So he's not out in open court. Okay, anyway, <laughs> keep it moving. It's a difficult position, which I agree with this next part. It's a difficult position to put a man who's accused but not been found guilty, put him in a courtroom and have to speak with 15 minutes notice. I'm gonna file a motion to withdraw. I don't want to do it, but I don't, Sorry, I don't think that I have a choice at this point. The options I've been given without any notice are either withdraw or be publicly shamed. I think public shaming is not only, there's not only a professional element to that, there's a personal aspect too. When the media is teed up like this and we show up here today with the court, having told us that we're gonna conduct some business that somehow bleeds over into a forced resignation or however you want to characterize this, I don't feel I have any, other choice professionally. I have a life beyond this beyond this courtroom and case, and I have a family and law practice. Had we been given notice, or if this was sorry, or if this would have been framed in a pleading format or some formal disciplinary claim, which there is a process for that in our business, then we could have come here with an opportunity to refute some of these things that you clearly thought through and prepared before we got here. We didn't have that opportunity and it's the idea that i'm going to have to go in the courtroom and defend myself against claims i don't agree with without any notice is unfair i also have some common sense and me going in there and standing my ground because my client wants me to is just going to make things worse for him so i'm going to withdraw my appearance i'm going to walk out of here go to my car call my staff and have them prepare a motion i'm going to withdraw my appearance but i'm doing it because i don't think I have any other choice professionally, not because I want to, and not because my client wants me to. I respect the court. Judge Gall has an opinion, but we're professionals and we can disagree. Gall, of course. Rosie, I'm extremely frustrated is probably a software. Oh my God, Tom, what a disaster. Anyway, wait, <laughs> hold on. I have to, I can't let it go. Anyway, just redo. <laughs> Pretend like you didn't see that. Rosie, <laughs> I am extremely frustrated is probably a soft word with the idea that we showed up today without any real opportunity to prepare for any of this. And I think it's improper. Goal. I think we talked about when you, parentheses McLean, asked for disqualification. And I indicated on our phone conversation, I am inclined to do that. Rosie. It was a phone conversation that was not on the record and then some follow-up emails. Gull, true. Rosie, there's an informality to that. Gull, true. Rosie, you also said you hadn't done any research or had time to talk to your senior judge and all those other things. And he, presumably Nick McClelland, has not filed a pleading with the court either. Gull, no, I'm doing that I'm doing this on my motion. Rosie, I'm a lawyer who practices in lots of courtrooms and I've been through some disqualification actions. In 20 years, I've never had a dis disciplinary complaint in my life that's been confirmed, if you will. I've seen lawyers disqualified and there is a process for that and it's not this, sister. With all due respect, <laughs> where, where you walk into a judge's office and they read a prepared statement to you, that is an indictment on my professional activities. And then you're handed a sheet of paper with two options. And one of them is, quote, I'm going to go out there and shame you or you can quit, end quote. You can understand how upset that would make any lawyer. And I don't think it's the right way to handle this from a due process standpoint. So I have no choice but to withdraw my appearance because I'm not going to go in there and take a public shaming without having any notice of it. 
Baldwin says, I'm the same withdrawal. I mirror what he said. I do appreciate you giving us advance notice, but beyond that, I wanted to take this and finish it out. I'm stunned. I don't know what to say, so I'll just say I'm moving to withdraw orally. Gall. Okay. Are you sure she said it like that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie, is the court going to generate further instructions on what to do with all the discovery we have? Gall. I already have. There's an order. I granted the state's protective order on discovery. Rosie, quote, no, I'm talking about my possession of all of this information. Am I to take it out to the trash can? Am I supposed to wait for another attorney? Is the court going to give us some guidance on how to move all this information from one law office? Gull, I did. When I granted the state's protective order. I think it's in the last paragraph of the protective order, which directs you to return it all to the state, all copies, whatever Nick McClellan um, gave them. Uh, they are required under that order to return it to you, Nick McClellan. Rosie, at the conclusion of the case. Gall, or your representation. Rosie. I know what order you're talking about. I read the order before I came today. Go. Okay. Rosie, so we're supposed to just take everything back and give it to the state and retain our work product until somebody asks us for it? Go. Your work product is your work product. I would hope that you would share it with your successor counsel because uh, that's in your client's best interest to do that. But it's entirely up to you. That's your work product that you have developed. Clearly, the discovery is required to go back to the state. Rosie, okay, what do you want to do with Rick? Go, I can transport him back to Westville. Rosie, do you want to make a record with his, I think it's appropriate, the court let him speak into the record, his thoughts, unless the court just accepts that as notice that those are his opinions. Go. Well, you wouldn't lie to me about that. Rosie, I would not lie to you about anything. Gall. So, of course, that's your representation that, um, that he would say that if he were brought in here. I can't imagine that the Department of Corrections being comfortable with bringing him into my office. I would not be comfortable with having in my off him in my office. Rosie, would the court also be inclined to mark as an exhibit the prepared statement so that is part of the record? Gall, I have the record rolling. Rosie, okay. Baldwin, so we're going to leave, I guess, and you're going to, how is this? You're just going to get up and go on the bench and say... Gall, I will just indicate to Mr. McLellan, um that... It's going to be in there with Mr. Luttrell that uh, I'll just say we've had a turn of events and the defense counsel is withdrawing. And that's all I'm going to say. Baldwin, can you wait for us to get out of here? Gall, of course. And we can have you. I don't know where you're parked at. Um, we have a hearing October 31st that I would like to keep as trial setting an appointment of new counsel. And if you can get things together by that date and return to Mr. McLellan, that would be good. Otherwise, with your permission, I will give successor counsel your contact information. Baldwin and Rosie Go. both said, okay. Okay. <laughs> Go. Where are you parked? Baldwin in front. Gull, everyone's in the courtroom, so I don't think there's anybody in the hallways. Uh, Rosie said, I'm going to get my staff member to get the stuff back to Nick McClelland. And then McClelland said, okay. Rosie said, thank you. Gull said, thank you. Then all hell has broken loose in the past month. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for helping me read that. I You're really welcome. appreciate it. Absolutely. My for inviting us. All right. Thank you. I'll see you later. Right. Unless you guys want to continue and I get to leave. No, <laughs> we'll, we'll jump in the chat and annoy you. Have All right. Then. Thank you guys. See you. Bye. 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 See ya.
So what have I missed in the comments? Hold on, let me go back or please stand by. So what does everybody think about this? I think, I, I, agree, I mean, I agree with various sides. So I think that Baldwin Rosie obviously messed up. Um, should they have been removed? I don't know, but also Gull, she's messed up a bunch of things too. So I think they should have had a hearing to at least do it more formally than in the chambers. So I'm looking for some comments to see. Hi to everybody. <laughs> Thank you for all the nice comments, but I don't want to highlight them. Let me scroll down. How far am I behind? 40 minutes. Wom Tepster. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And no, that's not me with a fake account. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Uh, let's see. This is the first time I've heard this. I'm not sure. I'm not saying that you're lying. Hi, Brian. Coincidence is that Rosie's stepmom works at the same place as the defense is the defense's main suspect, BH, at least up until the spring. I believe this to be a coincidence. I work with both. All right. Thank you for sharing your inside gossip. Yeah, um, subscribe to Deb's channel. It's so many, put it in the uh, comments, please. Hi, Matt. Why was Judge Gull uncomfortable with uh, allowing Rick in chambers? Super shady. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how often she has people who are inmates come into her sanctuary. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he's going to do anything. I mean, he's always in shackles, which I... My face, uh-oh, hold on a second. <laughs> Please stand by. Let me try and get rid of this rosy cheeks. No, that didn't work anyway. Just stop, don't look at me. Um, I don't agree that Rick is in shackles all the time. It's like, he's five foot four to five foot six. Just put him in regular handcuffs. Yeah, hi, Fiend. Sorry for all my spelling and grammatical errors. Somebody's making a spreadsheet as we speak. I'm just looking for comments, sorry. Yeah, hopefully you guys, it wasn't too ridiculous, my reading. Okay, let me scroll through a bunch of things. Gosh, some of these comments. Hi, Necessary Evil. I think they have more evidence than we think, but still probably not enough. I'm reserving final judgment until the end of the trial. And I, I agree. I mean, I, I think there's stuff that we don't know. So, that's, which I do not know personally, I'm just saying it seems likely. But obviously, if we've seen the defense referenced the depositions of Liggett and Holman. And I showed that PowerPoint the other day, like Rick's DNA was not found at the crime scene all that other stuff. They said like his phones, his computer, social media did not really tie Rick to the crime scene. Or I think some of them said the murders too, but we don't know exactly if there's anything about Abby and Libby's blood or DNA or their possessions being found at Rick's house. Hi, Travis Williamson. Wave your arms while you're reading this, and some rogue will be good here. What? And some rogue will be good here, too. Yeah, sorry. I need to work on my impressions. Hi, Wampo. Wampo says, I'm sorry, there was a suicide. Yeah, so one of some guy who used to work with Andy, Andrew Baldwin, it seems like Baldwin is still talking to this guy about the Delphi case. He stopped, I think, working with Baldwin possibly in 2019, or I'm not certain about that, but a few years ago. So he had access to Baldwin's office and he went to meet Baldwin and Baldwin, he said, was on the phone or in a meeting 
So this guy, the former coworker, his name's Mitch. He went into the conference room at Baldwin's office and he took photos of the bodies of Abby and Libby at the crime scene. He then shared them with several people. It just like went from one person to another. No, I've never seen them. I don't want to. So one of these guys, not the first guy, but so the first guy sent it to one other guy and that other guy sent it to somebody else. And that middle guy, he was interviewed by state police and he ended up killing, killing himself. I believe October 11th at 9 PM, he shot himself at home. He had a young daughter and he was married. It's really sad. Yeah. Please. Hi Lynn. Please be kind to each other. Hi Danielle. Louise. Hi, Louise. The police searched Rick's home, car, garden, workplace, and other places, I'm sure. They must have found something to arrest him. He tells his wife on the jail phone that he killed the girls. Yeah, I mean, I think this is, we have to wait for the trial to hear exactly all the evidence, hear this jailhouse confession where Rick called his wife and mom, and he's apparently repeatedly said that he is the one who killed Abby and Libby and that he is guilty of the crimes that he's charged with. Hi, Matt. Thank you very much. I appreciate your generosity. Um, let me try and highlight some things about what we were our uh, community theater reenactment just there. Hi, Ann. Bingo. Agree with the judge. The gag order, but uh, Rosie and Baldwin waltz right out and start mouthing off to the press gathered there. Right there, it was clear they were just going to disrespect the court entirely. I, I don't know. I, I agree with some of uh, Gull's concerns about the competence or incompetence of the defense team, which I have a PowerPoint. <laughs> Hold on. Uh-oh. Hold up, wait a minute. So here, let me get, get me off the screen. What's going on, sorry. So I made this and let me see what it's about, I forget. Um, where is this from? So the top part is from this October 19th uh, hearing. And Rosie says, do you want to make a record with this? I mean, I think it's appropriate that the court let him speak into the record referring to Rick, his thoughts, unless the court just accepts that as notice that those are Rick's opinions. Judge Gall said, well, you wouldn't lie to me about that. And Rosie said, I would not lie to you about anything, which I'm not sure that I agree with. So on the bottom right here, it says on April 5th, two days after Rick made this confession to his wife in the phone call, um, and it seems like the defense freaked out and has been looking for ways to take attention away from that since. It was filed as emergency motion, which I don't know if it's somebody using a Boston accent or something, emergency motion to modify safekeeping order. So is forgetting the R a sign of incompetence? Rosie's the one who signed this. So that April 4th thing, if you remember the, pic the two pictures of Rick. So there was at least five things in there where I don't know, I guess it's up to all of you to decide, do you think any of those things written by Rosie, his signature is the only one on that uh, uh, motion to modify safekeeping order, are any of these considered lies to go? The defense, quote, Mr. Allen has been entombed in a cell as small as six feet in width by 10 feet in length, a space no larger than that of a dog kennel, end quote. So that at this June 15th hearing, the Westville warden kind of corrected all these accusations he said Rick is in a cell 12 feet by eight feet. Although Rick has lost weight, he has been eating, showering, and utilizing recreation time at the prison. Another one, defense. Mr. Allen is afforded showers only one to two times per week. The warden confirmed that Rick is allowed three showers per week, which to me is like, there has to be a schedule at the prison. I mean, say what you want, but it's not like, oh, this week you get one and next week you get two. Defense said, Mr. Allen is required to wear the same clothes, including underwear, for days and days on end, all of which are soiled, stained, tattered, and torn. So he said 
all of them are nasty as hell. So Warden said, no, I don't think so. Prisoners are provided three sets of clothing each week. Rick has access to commissary where he has bought clothing, socks, and shoes. Two more. The defense said, Mr. Allen is sleeping on a pad on a concrete floor. And the warden said, Rick has a bed, which I wrote here. This is not necessarily a lie just to say that Rick is sleeping on a pad, but it kind of insinuated that Rick is sleeping on a pad on a concrete floor because he was put in a cell without a bed. So why is he sleeping on a pad instead of the actual bed? Finally, Mr. Allen is afforded very little, if any, recreation time outside of his cold, concrete, and metal quarters. The warden clarified, Rick has a tablet for music, movies, and phone calls, and he has one hour of recreation time five times per week, and the other two days he does not get anything. I agree that that's kind of um, a low amount of time out of his cell he's not been convicted yet of anything. So I don't know what the solution is because if he goes into, I don't know exactly what the recreation time is. If he goes like outside or what, if he has to be in some area just by himself and how time consuming that would be for guards, just to take him and then bring him back and do other prisoners at the same time. What's this? Uh, I don't know. Back to your comments. Um, please, please don't curse in your comments. Otherwise, I can't highlight them. Or, or everybody will, will be blushing like I am. <laughs> Hi, Chico's. Lawyers lying to the court is a complete no-no. I guess everybody has to make their own decisions about whether you think uh, the defense has lied to the court or anything in this case. She Elf Johnson, hello. Even I check the email address I send something to. I'm not gonna act like I've never done this, which for people who have not seen, one of the accusations, or not accusations, it's a fact, that Baldwin was typing an email to Brad Rosie, and it included like an index of the folder or file names of various discovery items. And he sent it to Brandon Woodhouse. They do have the first three letters that are the same, which I understand that that's something that is not done by intent by Baldwin. However, when you do it with like your mistake just happens to be confidential discovery and you send it to this Brandon Woodhouse guy who has been arrested by Carroll County several times and he absolutely hates Nick McClelland and other Carroll County officials. I mean, that's like more than just a little boo-boo. So that's one strike against Baldwin for making a mistake. He made a mistake for not locking up photos of dead girls in his conference room. Obviously not just anybody would walk into his law firm and just end up in the conference room without somebody saying, what the hell are you doing? We don't know you. But still, it, that guy, Mitch, should not have been given access to that. And look what happened. So. If Baldwin messed up twice, as Nick said, what's next? Like, could the third time be even worse? I don't know. Hi, Remy Flarp Omega Ratatouille. <laughs> um, I'm just joining. I'm sorry, but can someone tell me what we're looking at? So it was the October 19th transcript where Judge Gull, Nick McClelland, Andrew Baldwin and Brad Rosie had a little discussion about Judge Gull was upset with the lawyers for Rick for the past 11 months, various items where she felt like they were not competent to represent Rick. And she pretty much told them either go into the courtroom and face the prosecution and all these witnesses and the exhibits, which the defense had not even been given access to, or say that you're resigning. So as I said before, I think it should have been a little, a little bit more formal and more public, more notice, more access to um, what the prosecution was gonna present. Matt says they are very competent defense attorneys. Everybody here is entitled to their opinion. I would not hire them. I, I said previously, all those errors in 
the defense 136 page Frank's memo. I mean, some people would say, oh, you're nitpicking spelling errors, but I just don't feel like Baldwin or Rosie, first of all, I understand that they cannot write 136 pages by themselves, just the two of them. So they have help. However, is it competent to not even read some major thing that you're putting your signature on? I, I don't think so. And I don't think either one of them read it. So why are you submitting something to Gull, sorry, to Judge Gull and the court without having read it yourself? I, I don't know, that's not competent to me. Anne says, lawyers have professional ethical responsibility to have a good faith basis for assertions they make, even in argumentative pleadings. Rosie and Baldwin were apparently just bloviating whatever came into their head. Yeah, everybody here has obviously different opinions about Gull, Baldwin, Rosie, and Rick. Just please be polite to each other, because if you're rude, my moderators are just going to delete your comments and nobody will hear them or see them. I am a half hour behind on comments. <laughs> Let's see. Let me see your comments about what we were just talking about. Matt says the state is grossly incompetent. Nick has never tried a murder. Their quote unquote investigation led to the death of a military man. Shame on them. Um, I agree that, well, I don't know that somebody said Nick may have um, tried a murder. I'm not totally sure. However, as I stated at the beginning, this Le Jim Luttrell, actually, I'm going to show that now. Hi, everybody. Okay, one second. I'm going to share this Jim Luttrell, hold on, Jim Luttrell's experience. This was from January 2019. The Indiana Department of Child Services announces Jim Luttrell. Did they spell that right? Or I don't know. Uh, maybe I spelled it wrong. Sorry. Is this the right guy? Sorry. <laughs> As its new deputy general counsel of the litigation division, Luttrell, a former prosecutor and criminal justice professor, will oversee and manage all functions of the DCS litigation department. I might be wrong. Am I wrong, you guys? That's not something new. Does anybody know if I was right or not? Is this the guy who's helping? Sorry, I, I thought that was this guy. Hi, DNA King. I guess everybody produces 150 page documents routinely. It is very difficult to produce a well researched legal document in the time frames that are necessary without having some typos. I agree, but I mean, they mis misspelled the prosecutor's name 16 times and they got it right four. I don't know. Everybody's saying this guy looks like B T B T K. I'm looking for comments here. Travis, who I believe is a lawyer, said to Sub Rosa, I think that was the impression of Gull. However, Rosie made a record and got concessions, leaving quote unquote notice very much in question. Rosie did an excellent job on preserving notice issue. High caricature contest. Uh, she says, it's ridiculous how the defense keeps messing up and act like it's no big deal. Just oops, sorry. As I said before, it's like, I agree with Nick. It's like, if Baldwin has messed up twice, what's what could be next? And is Rick, if he gets found not guilty, is he gonna say, well, my lawyers were incompetent, so I need an appeal. DNA King says, having different facts does not mean that somebody is quote unquote lying. Being wrong about a fact with knowledge that you are wrong about a fact, that's lying. Well, why would they be so specific about the dimensions and other, these other things like saying Rick, his, he's getting showers one or two times a week. I mean, I, I understand that the jail or the prison isn't going to let 
the lawyers with the tape measure into Rick's cell, but still. Tom Webster is my dad says, one thing's for certain, every side of this is a mess. I agree with that. Justice for the girls and families suffer from every one of their actions. Yes, to me, it's so crazy that this happened in the woods almost what, like almost seven years ago. And from the very start, law enforcement errors have caused like so many delays, millions of dollars being spent. Now the judge has a lawyer, the defense lawyer has a lawyer, and it's just like the trial is now delayed another year. It's, it's insane. I have four pit bulls. The defense, prosecution, and judge cannot hold hearings behind the defendant's knowledge. Yeah, this stuff needs to be more public. And I mean, Joel, hello, Joel. Gull, she also hasn't followed procedures either. It's like those 118 unsealed documents from last June, which murder she, I guess, filed some, whatever, some filing and said these should be public. And Gull and the court was like, oh, yeah, sorry, you're right. Like 118 were wrongly kept confidential. That's not competence. I don't know what the answer is. Sub Rosa, like I said, I'm a skeptic and a conspiracy theorist as well, but I'm 100% sure that these two yahoos needed to be fired for gross negligence. Some people love Baldwin and Rosie. Some people don't think they're competent. Well, also about this saying they aren't supposed to discuss matters in chambers without the defendant present, all must be present. Well, why are they even having phone calls and emails that are off the record? DNA King, do you want to talk about that? Or uh, Travis, I think your name is. DNA King said, if you believe what a prison warden tells you, then I have some land in Florida I'd like to sell you. He's sleeping on a pad because he's in an isolation cell that doesn't have a bed. I don't know. Also, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. As I was saying, like, Gull has a lawyer. Baldwin has a lawyer. And here's some updates on Westville. Actually, this happened, I think, six months ago. The warden himself has gotten into problems. I think the gist of it was the warden gets a house near Westville to stay over at. But he's only supposed to be the only one who stays there. And there was an issue where he was having his family members stay at this house where, I guess, the state pays for it. So there's some kind of drama with him. Within the past few weeks, Westville, a female dental assistant, came into the jail. She worked there. And she had methamphetamine like taped between her groin. And so she was arrested for smuggling that in. Lastly, actually, there's two more. If you live in Indiana, I guess you know you're spending $1.2 billion on a new prison to replace Westville. Finally, somebody got killed at Westville from blunt, blunt force trauma. I, there haven't been really any updates in the news about who did it. I'm sure some people might say the guards did. I, I don't know the stories. Travis, thank you for sharing. Um, Travis and DNA King, thanks for sharing your legal experience. In 37 years, never seen a criminal defendant in custody being brought to chambers. It could impact defendants' rights. When I first read it, I thought it was bias. Now, much stronger evidence of bias. Sub Rosa said they had. Uh, the defense had a week's notice. It was not an ambush. I agree it was, in a, was not a total ambush, but also they should have been given a hearing with more uh, of the exhibits and everything else that was going to be presented. We're at one hour and four minutes. <laughs> My new time limit is two hours and 59 minutes. Somebody remind me. Wampo says, yeah, the defense has been messing up way too much, though, to be honest, they needed to go. 
Unfortunate the judge didn't do it as professionally as she should have, which I agree with. We need to get a whole new set of professionals, in my opinion. I agree, Wampo, aka Wee Woo, or whatever. Hi, Rachel. And why have crude names for case files, especially in a case like this? Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to. And I'm not, I'm not sure if I'll ever see your response. Hi, JH. The defense was not prepared because they thought they were there for something else. Everyone else was prepared. I, I agree. And that's not fair to them. DNA King says she gave them a Hobson's choice. Let me ridicule, ridicule, hello, let me ridicule you publicly or withdraw. And to their utter shame, these lawyers backed out to save their own reputations. Oh yeah. So the update is, I believe by November 27th, we'll find out who's staying, who's staying and who's going. Gull, Rosie and Baldwin. Um, Rosie and Baldwin, I think they also filed for the trial to happen within 70 days and who knows what's going to happen. Stay tuned to other people's channels, not mine. Tom Webster is my dad says in front of her, they admitted quote, we're not sealing anything anymore, which was a decision made right before filing the Frank's motion. Then they blame the new administrative system. I don't buy it. Yeah, Mart. Hi, Mart. I don't know if this is brought up, but Judge Gull is in the hospital. Yes. So I don't know if she's going to remove herself, depending on what her health is. Hi, Ivy. I've been surprised how many errors have been in both sides' filings. I totally agree with you. I mean, McClelland has made errors. Everybody's made errors. And some people will say, oh, they're not that big of a deal, but it's not a good sign. Hi, Sinbad Sailor. Tom, could you please explain that civil action Baldwin and Rosie filed against Indiana Corrections? That seems sketchy. Were they trying to get some side cash? Well, maybe they're trying to get some future popping dollars. Um, well, Gull seemed to be saying, I don't know a lot about this, so don't quote me. It seems like it was a tort claim, which from Brandon Woodhouse, I learned he did a tort claim notice, I think, which I believe in one of his videos, he said, it's kind of like giving 90 days notice to somebody that if they don't like respond to you or settle, you might file a lawsuit in like 90 days and anybody feel free to correct me. So I believe the, it was Rosie who filed this tort claim on behalf of Rick, I think saying like about his conditions at Westville. But I was like, why is it about the conditions at Westville and not false arrest? Like, why are they complaining about that? But are the conditions, but not um, Rick being falsely arrested if he's innocent. So I guess um, Gall's issue was you guys, the lawyers are re representing Rick in a criminal case, but you're already preparing to like, like you said, try and get some money through a civil case after the trial or something. I don't know. Hi, Cranky Babushka. The memo seemed unprofessional. They probably hired the work out. As DNA King said, it's not easy to write 136 pages, which I agree. It was well put together and researched. However, it was not well proofread. And why are you putting your signature on something that you don't read? Which I don't think that Walter or Rosie read that nonsense and would not be like, um, why does this paragraph reference Tony Liggett several times? And one time you're referring to his last name with two T's and a few sentences later, it's one T. Twice they refer to Ward and Gallipo. They did not spell his name right either time. It's a mess. Hi, Nisi. I proofread and corrected my fifth grade papers better. Oh my gosh. Hi, Venus gal. These guys are bad news. They cannot even protect their offices, nor a client's file of a case of national interest repeatedly. 
Some people love them. Some people call them out like you do. I don't know. I want Rick to be as healthy as possible physically, mentally, and have the best representation. From what I've seen from Baldwin and Rosie, I don't think they're the best. Hi, Malibu. Lawyers lie all the time in court. So do defendants. I agree, Cranky Babushka. It's a shame, really. This pushes, I'm sorry, this just pushes justice and the truth backwards. So everyone has to wait. I know it's like, if Baldwin didn't let, it seems like most of this, the most recent thing to get this to this point is the leak of these photos, which was Baldwin did not protect them. It's like, why are you leaving photos of dead girls on your conference room table that somebody could take a photo of? Anne says Baldwin knew exactly well, sorry, Baldwin knew exactly well before that the matter of the photo leak was coming up in the hearing. He had his own lawyer already, David Hennessy. If he didn't share that with his co-counsel, that's on them. Yeah, and it seems like that first thing with um, Brandon Woodhouse, that wrong email, Gull was complaining that she was not really notified immediately, and that's not a good look for Baldwin. Yeah, this is a good point. Thank you, Travis. I don't think Judge uh, Judge Gull has done anything shady either. However, she has clearly violated ACR rules, doesn't have an understanding of how they work, evidenced by her order attempting to fix it. I agree. So people are complaining that, unfortunately, I've been kind of busy with my deep dive like every day for the past seven weeks until like a week ago. So I've not really been following most of the updates for the past almost two months. But there are procedures and that's what I just can't get past. Like why are procedures not being followed by law enforcement and lawyers and judges? I just don't understand it. So apparently some ACR thing, I think you have to file some kind of form if you're gonna make a court filing confidential, as far as I know, I might be wrong. But as I said, Gull herself, she has shown signs of incompetence. So. She gots to go, and so does everybody else. I don't know. Sub Rosa, the friend didn't steal the photos. He was also told details about the strategy. This was the second time they leaked information. So that's a good segue to something. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. I think this is important to show. What am I showing? Here we go. This is, I have this labeled as document 20. I'll zoom in for you blind people. Um, <laughs> what do we got here? Please stand by. Okay, I think you can, I'll make it bigger one more time. So I think this is important to know for all of us. So it says February 13th of 2023, state's motion requesting protective order governing discovery. So I'm just gonna read this, it's only two pages. Now comes the state of Indiana by Nick McClelland and advises that the state has filed charges against the defendant under the above referenced cause number that pursuant to rule 26 of the Indiana rules of trial procedure, the defendant is entitled to discovery, which is evidence for people who don't know, which includes materials of a sensitive nature. Therefore, pursuant to the provision of Rule 26C, the state requests that the court issue a protective order governing these materials as follows. And keep these in mind as you think of like some of the actions in this case. That Number one, that one copy of the discovery material shall be provided to counsel for the defendant. Two, that the discovery material shall not be used for any purpose other than to prepare for the defense in the above referenced cause number, which was any of this material used to prepare Rick's or Rosie's tort claim, which was a civil cause, which would be a different cause number. So did Rosie violate number two? I don't know. I'm just asking these questions. You're the ones who have to answer it. 
Number three, that the discovery material shall not be publicly exhibited, displayed, shown, used for educational, research, or demonstrative purposes, or used in any other manner except in judicial proceedings in the above referenced action. Four, that the discovery material may be viewed only by parties, counsel, and counsel's investigators and experts. So was this Mitch guy signed on as an expert to be viewing this material. Five, that if copies of the discovery material are made and provided to the defendant, investigators or experts for the defense, hello, I don't know, whatever, that sensitive and private information contained in the discovery shall be redacted, including any social security numbers, IDAC information or NCIC information, any information related to the personal information of juveniles, including social security numbers, names and date of birth, and any FBI sentinel information. So in some other filing, uh, Judge Gall criticized the defense and said that because they included the names of Abby and Libby in their filings, that was a violation because you're supposed to redact the names of juvenile murder victims. Which to me, I was like, well, if you're gonna have a rule, it has to apply to everybody. Hold on, let me have a drink. So the prosecution has filed a bunch of filings and they referenced Abby and Libby. So why would one thing, why would the defense be criticized for doing the same thing that the prosecution has? So I think if there's a rule, it should apply to everybody, not just one side. Almost done. Number six, that discovery material shall not be distributed to any person not authorized to view it, including witnesses, family members, relatives, and friends of the defendant. Number seven, that no person other than the defendant, counsel for the defendant, and those persons listed in paragraph five shall be granted access to said discovery material or the substance of any portion thereof, unless that person has signed an agreement in writing that he or she has received a copy of this order and that he or she submits to the court's jurisdiction and authority with respect to the material, agrees to be subject to, sorry, agrees to be subject to the court's contempt powers for any violation of this order and is granted per, uh, prior permission by this court to access said discovery material. So did Mitch, did Andrew Baldwin have this guy, Mitch Westerman and anybody else who he's been working with, have they all signed, the, signed this uh, document? and the court granted permission to them. If not, is that a big boo-boo for Baldwin? Number eight, that upon final disposition of this case, or sorry, of the case, the discovery material referred to in paragraph one and any and all transcripts shall be returned to the Carroll County Prosecutor's Office or maintained by defense counsel pursuant to the terms herein. Well, judge kind of referred to the last paragraph, I think, and she said, it also refers to the defense team, I guess not even working on the case anymore, which to me, I don't see that really specified here. Number nine, that counsel for the defendant shall be responsible to ensure that all persons involved in the defense of this case comply with this order. Finally, number 10, that the written documents and records provided by the state with the discovery material fall under the same rules as described above. So that was Nick, yada, yada, yada. So, do you guys think that maybe Baldwin didn't follow the rules with Mitch Westerman having access to um, that the photos and stuff? Because it wasn't just the photos. It's apparently Baldwin is asking Mitch Westerman ideas for um, strategy and other stuff. Hi, Shoehorn. Actually, I've never deleted a comment and I'm in some other browser, so I, I can't delete comments because I get too far behind. How far behind am I? Only 20 minutes. Sorry if I don't get to your stuff. Uh, let's see. Hi, the rationale. Like it or not, Rick's Sixth Amendment rights have been violated. 
Carroll County is simply incompetent. There's way too many, unfortunately, like this is not a good look for Indiana, this entire case. I'm not, I'm not highlighting that one. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh, you guys, some of these comments. Hi, Alex, or Alec, oh, sorry, Alec. On the, I know who you are, Alex, sorry. On the topic notion of lawyers shouldn't lie to the court, certainly true. How about the judge effectively lying to the courtroom when she said, quote, we've had an unexpected turn of events with Baldwin, Baldwin and Rosie? I, I agree, but I mean, maybe she was expecting them to go out into the court and face what was out there, but I don't blame them really for taking the back door. DNA King says, if it's an English class, fail them. But some of the best legal arguments I've ever seen came from people who could write a simple declarative English statement sentence. I don't know. We can just agree to disagree. I just feel like it was totally incompetent to sign their name to something that was such a mess. Rachel says there are legal proofreaders. I'm not sure what what specific. Sorry, I'm not sure what specifically they're used for. Clearly, not this. Anne says the judge is well within the scope of her authority and discretion regarding court-appointed lawyers. It's her court. I don't know. I mean, is she truly looking out for Rick and in his best interests? She said she was. Hi, Dave. At this rate, this case may never be tried. I don't know what the hell's going on, to be honest. It's currently it's for October 15th, 2024. It was supposed to be January 8th of 2024. Travis the lawyer says discuss discussing strategy does not violate either order wasn't cited quote as an example of gross negligence you don't necessarily have to divulge discovery to discuss strategy or confidential information right but after uh, seeing those whatever 10 items I just showed if Mitch did or if Baldwin did not get Mitch to sign anything do you think there was any kind of violation? Hi, Susan. Nice to see you. Hi, Son of Liberty. I referenced your funny comment under my seven hour deep dive video where Son of Liberty left a comment saying Tom is seven weeks, four days, 19 hours, 39 minutes and 14 seconds behind the live chat. Oh, wait. So what did you say? The way she kept so much, the way that Gull kept has kept so much off the docket and resisted transparency every step of the way hasn't helped sway me. Yeah, I agree. It's just like procedures are not being followed correctly and that's not competent. Venus gal. Hi, 1500 pages with attachments. Wasn't the poorly written, wasn't the poorly written Frank's motion. So the Frank's memo was 136 pages. There were, I think, seven depositions that were 784 pages total, plus there were 126 exhibits. So, I mean, I'm not surprised that she hasn't uh, uh, commented on it yet. She's busy. Also, I have a question for the lawyers here. 1,500 pages for a judge. Who is helping her go through that? Like, what's that process? Oh my gosh. Hi, Santa Ho. They hired legal freelance writers from Fiverr. Oh my gosh. JH, if Rosie's office did not leak the email or photos, shouldn't he be allowed to stay to preserve Alan's rights to a speedy trial? Yes, I do agree with that part of it. However, as I just showed before, Rosie's name was on some things where there's questionable false falsehoods or truthfulness. It, it wasn't just those two items, but I agree. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say.
a variety of opinions in the chat. Hi, Kevin. Aloha. Uh, I think the defense was sloppy with the Frank's motion, but it served a purpose. It contradicted the state's probable cause affidavit, raised doubts, and gained some public support of Rick. They're lawyering for Rick. Well, the issue is the only person that they should have wrote, written that for was Gull, for, them, for her to say, okay, Tony Liggett did lie in the PCA, so I will grant you a hearing to make your case. I don't know. Dave says finding 12 jurors at this point is pushing it. And even if that happens, it will go to appeal. Well, I mean, there's certain people who don't really watch like or read the internet. So I'm sure they, I'm not sure if this is your point, Dave, but I'm sure they can find some jurors who are not familiar with this case. It's as, as it is now, it's happening in Allen County, not Carroll County. Son of Liberty asked another commenter, if you were headed to trial and you had counsel you were pleased with, would you be glad if the court stripped you of your representation? I, I don't know. D does Rick know about all these errors and whatever incompetence that his lawyers have done? Like who, who is telling him the truth? You really think Baldwin is saying oh, I sent the discovery here. This is what a consequence could be. Photos of the girls' dead bodies in the woods leaked on the internet with people. I mean, I've not heard about them on the internet, but I know people were emailing them to each other. I'm just looking for things we haven't talked about. We're about halfway done before I get to go. Hi, Shelly. But why did Rosie have to withdraw? He wasn't involved in the leak. I don't think that's right. And it is prolonging it another year. The poor families, I agree with that. Why is Rosie grossly negligent? I don't know. We'll, we'll find out uh, November 27th if he's coming back. DNA King, the defense lawyer, says, sanction Baldwin, have the bar discipline him, but please, please, please do not punish Rick for the actions that his lawyer supposedly took. So you think that Baldwin and Rosie are the most competent for Rick, or you just don't want another year delay based on all the work that Baldwin and Rosie have put in? Hi, Purdue RN, you're still here after your dramatic reading. Thank you. Baldwin also severely messed up by not notifying the court of the Woodhouse leak in December when it occurred. I, I agree, like, isn't that his responsibility? And that's what Gull was saying. Also by breaching attorney-client privilege by discussing the case with an outsider. We don't know exactly how much of an outsider Mitch was, if there was some kind of agreement that did follow the rules or not. Hi, Luna. Defense attorneys have done a great job of creating reasonable doubt. Well, I agree with, with some people. Some people do believe the Odinist theory. But as I was saying, some people don't even know how to use their cell phones to even know like the details about this case. It'll be interesting when they try and select a jury. Ann says, that's not true. Everything that Tom says. Judges have in-chamber meetings with lawyers without defendant all the time. 
The judge told them, your choice, hearing or no hearing. They chose to cut and run. I, I understand how they didn't want to go out in that courtroom, especially after they asked, which was kind of interesting. The defense had previously asked within the prior few weeks, we want cameras in the courtroom so that the public can see how the process works. And then when it came time for them to like be called out for some bad actions or mistakes, they were like, you know, I don't think so. As I said, I understand partially why they would not want to do that. Travis, the lawyer says not normal to have a lot of conversations via email or phone that will eventually be a formal motion. Logistics are to discuss how much time, how many witnesses in my county or up there. JH says they may have needed this, uh, sorry, they may have needed to be disciplined, but it should have been done with proper notice to prevent this dumpster fire. I agree. If everything isn't done right, this is what happens and those poor families suffer longer. I totally agree with that. It's just like one thing after another with this case. It's insane. Kevin asked the big question. If the state has their man, Rick, why didn't Nick charge Rick with first degree murder with a potential death penalty? Instead, they go with felony murder, which eliminates the death sentence. Um, I don't know. It seemed, well, they first raided Rick's house on October 13th. They got his DNA, I think. I think what they did was they gave him a bottle of water. I think it was Aquafina was listed in the search warrant. So they could have gotten Rick's DNA on October 13th. They had him come in for a follow-up on October 26th, and he never left after that. So by that time, did they have DNA results that showed that Rick was, his DNA was not matching the crime scene DNA, but they felt like he was bridge guy. So that might be the answer to the question. For Pitbull says money, Cass County Jail would have has housed Rick. Rosie would have done have this over with Westville. Sorry. Did you go to the Tony Klein School of Punctuation? I need some commas and periods here. Westville was the worst placement ever. Yeah. I don't know what the right answer is. If Rick goes to Cass County Jail, the sheriff said that he'll never get to leave his cell at all because if he's on suicide watch still and making comments about commit, killing himself or whatever, the apparently the process at Cass County is he does not get to leave his cell and he would not get to see his family there either. And also from what I've seen, county jails only have mental health and medical professionals come in once a week compared to Westville where I've heard that they have them 24 hours a day. So I want Rick to have as much like medical health or whatever counselors at any time he needs it. Is sending him somewhere that does not have that every day a good thing? I don't know. I don't know what his mental state is right now. Courtney says the warden has to live alone. I don't know. Google Galippo here. I'll write his name. Am I going to spell it right? I'll probably mess it up. Yeah, I'm not going to spell it. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> His name is John. Just search Warden, sorry, Westville Warden House or something like that. You guys have to do some research once in a while. DNA King says, lawyers have off-the-record telephone conversations with judges all the time about scheduling issues, etc., but never, never, never about the issues in the case. Well, it seems like they were emailing about this leak. I have them somewhere, but like I said, I, I've fallen really far behind the chat and the case. Hi, it's a crime machine.
Hi, Salty Beach. Nice to see you. Just seeing what's going on here. Sorry, I'm just looking for her comments. Yeah, um, Sub Rosa says the emails that were released between the judge and the defense counsel document the notice that they were given. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have them readily available to show on my screen. Sorry. Yeah, so what do you guys think? Do you think Gull gone? Baldwin gone, Rosie gone. What do you think is going to happen in the next week? Courtney says, are there any competent authorities in Indiana? I've seen incompetence from everybody pretty much involved in this case. Not everybody, but a fair amount. Not saying that everybody else doesn't mess up at their jobs. Wampo, who hypothetically, or actually, has the power to appoint a new judge? I, well, it's going before the Indiana Supreme Court. So I think, I have not read all the filings, but I think it's um, the Supreme Court of Indiana can fire Judge Gall. I might be wrong. If so, somebody write it in the comments. Venus Gal, Tom is wrong again. I think I thought the 27th was Gull's deadline to respond, or do I have that wrong? Does anybody know like when it's going to be uh, resolved for is Gull going to be fired? Is Baldwin and Rosie going to be fired? Malibu says Rick needs to have a speedy trial. Judge Gull has an excuse to recuse herself now with her medical issues. Well, what do you think the answer is? Keep Baldwin and Rosie and get rid of Gull and do a 70 day trial or trial 70 days from the filing. I think most of us just for the, at least for the family members and even for Rick, he's innocent until proven guilty, his family, his wife, his daughter, his mom, they're all suffering with this just being delayed for another year. Sorry, Anne. I tried to just save time by calling people by their last name. Alec says, regardless of what one thinks of Baldwin and Rosie's issues, representation of Rick so far, I think it's evident they must genuinely believe in his innocence if they are that this passionate about fighting back versus the judge. I don't know. I mean, Nick McClelland filed something where he says he feels like the state does not have any exculpatory evidence proving that or just not, does not have any exculpatory evidence for Rick. That's good for Rick showing that he's not bridge guy. We just have to wait and see um, all the evidence that's going to be presented at the trial because none of us really know everything. Travis, the lawyer, says, in a civil case, it was a notice of claim is required to preserve an action against the state. It was to preserve a claim. The court, unfortunately, was not correct that this was a conflict for them to do. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, well, Alex says that even Rosie and Baldwin or whatever said they would represent Rick for free. Okay. I don't know if that's allowed. I don't, I don't know. But some people are saying, that obviously, they know how much it would cost, but I don't know.
Sorry for the awkward silence. I'm looking for comments. Yeah, well, Lynn says the attorneys would go bankrupt if they went pro bono. I, I don't know. Tiff, Tiff just cannot, you guys. <laughs> Neither can I. I was obviously triggered by the manifesto and all those errors. I made a spreadsheet. My spreadsheet about the errors was not because I was expecting so many mistakes. At the beginning, because of what I just showed about the safekeeping order with all those lies by or inconsistencies by the defense and Rosie, I was like, okay, let me see if they're going to lie in this manifesto. And I would say there's not that many lies or untruths. Most of it was from law enforcement documents and whatever the Click, Ferency, and Murphy team and their Odin reports. However, there were some other things about the Westville guards that that was not in the Odin reports. And that was kind of shady to accuse the Westville guards of threatening Rick. And the only reason Rick called his wife to confess was because the Odinist guards were going to kill him or kill his wife if he didn't call her to say, I'm guilty. It's like, why? Would, uh, that does not make sense to me. Yeah. Anyway. Kristen, hi, Kristen, or Kirsten, sorry. I thought the Odin stuff was off the wall. I think most people did. I'm still unsure about the EF Odin suspect and his confessions to his two, his two sisters. Hi, Hoosier Nini. Hopefully I was saying your name right. I know your screen name, but I don't know that I get it right. But thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody who celebrates it on Thursday. Rose says, no one should be in prison without a guilty verdict. Well, where do you think he should be? Like, which county jail? Should he be in general population where someone might be able to, frankly, just kill him or assault him? I just said before, somebody at Westville, got a prisoner, got killed. Do you really think that this guy, Rick, who's like the most notorious inmate in Indiana right now, like he's going to be able to walk around these other crazy ass people <laughs> and have them not be like punching his five foot four face. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, okay, just send, send Rick back to Carroll County jail and general population and ho hope for the best. Is that what people want? Hi, lady Monet's cafe judge gull may have more information about the lawyer's action than she disclosed. There is a law enforcement investigation about the leaked photos. Well, she had um, a fair, fairly long list of other stuff that she was not happy about. DNA King. Well, I appreciate DNA King and uh, Travis sharing your lawyer expertise. Thank you. And everybody else too. Luna says photos were leaked many years ago. Yeah. So this is some point that I wanted to make. Judge Gull and some people are saying, well, the defense was incompetent by sharing evidence that leaked, but by Barbara McDonald, she went on court TV and said, I heard from law enforcement who has seen the crime scene photos. And these are like sketches of where the branches were and the bodies that the, the, whatever the positions of Abby and Libby's bodies. So how is that different than what the defense did for people like law enforcement is sharing information that they should not be with non law enforcement people. And the defense is doing the same thing. So as I said before, I try and keep like, if there's, a procedure or something that it should uh, apply to all sides, not just one. Johannes, could Baldwin have intentionally left the docs on the table for the coworker to take and leak? 
I don't know. I mean, this obviously the result has been horrible for Baldwin. So I would be more inclined to say it was just incompetence of leaving stuff out. Travis, the lawyer, not one, not a single one of the complaints against Baldwin and Rosie impact Rick's rights. They are against the court filings. Sorry, they are against the court's, uh, start over. They are against the court's rulings and the court does not feel that their allegations proved true on Travis, you write too, too, too long, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so I was just, hi, Dave, I already said hi to you. Um, the prosecution leaks things all the time. So if it's one, if it's bad for one side, then it should be bad for the other. When is this trial going to be over? When is this case going to be over? Not for me, I, I, for Abby and Libby and their families. And all this other just nonsense that goes on. Son of Liberty, when you keep everything you can off the docket, you're a shady judge. If you want the benefit of doubt, be transparent. Yeah, I mean, procedures are just not being followed correctly. Caricature, caricature contest. How's your painting going? When I first read the 136 page memorandum, it sounded like a fantasy novel, like the lawyers must be joking and to spell everything wrong and repeat themselves over and over and over. And they did not get to the Frank's hearing stuff until page 105. However, the fantasy novel part, it came, like I said, it came from law enforcement, at least the Odinist stuff. I don't know how much evidence the three, whatever, Odin report law enforcement officers had access to. Because obviously the unified command, like the top six, or I think the top six law enforcement officers, they moved on from the Odinists. Why? And why did the other three not? Angie Panji, hopefully I said that right. Did you guys hear the document that Gull filed to the Supreme Court, she said was moot is not moot. Three lawyers sent a document today, pointed out all the mistakes. She has to do it again. Yeah, I'm kind of behind today. <laughs> and says she does not see any inco incompetence on Gull's part. We're allowed to disagree, but I just don't think that she's followed procedures. What about those 118 unsealed documents? Why did she screw that up or did somebody on her staff screw that up? She admitted that they should have been released and they were confidential for months. Meg, I hollered so loud when I saw your whole shirt. Yes, people have been asking me to do merchandise and I finally spent, obviously you can tell, it's like 12 minutes making a logo. Sleuther Vandross Detective Agency. Here's the scuba gear. Here's a magnifying glass to zoom in. Available in my store below this video. That's all I'm saying. Next. There's also, a. am getting a water thing to that has my logo bye bye three-year-old taco bell cup all right next sub rosa i can't believe that people are calling the judge incompetent either i wonder where they're getting their information from tom's live chats i don't know travis the lawyer david bowie van you described process accurately on how to designate pleadings, confidential, and you have to submit a redacted version, public version, 
an unredacted version private and attached notice, which is that ACR thing, right? So people, I think we're saying golf, sorry, judge Gull failed to do this ACR notice. As I said, I might be getting some of these things wrong. I'm kind of behind. Speaking of behind, I'm 35 minutes behind on comments. We have exactly one hour and nine minutes left. Hi, 391 people. <laughs> Wampo wishes the judge from the Daryl Brooks trial could take this case. She was amazing. That was that crazy guy who's yelling in court. I did not watch any of that. The rationale. So a second trial has broke out within the original trial. Must feel great to Abby and Libby's families. Great job, Carroll County. I mean, yeah, just the thing that I've been thinking about, it's like the tentacles. I know Doug Carter mentioned it, and I think of it as a different way. Just like whoever this man is on the bridge who did this or was involved, at least, just all these, like, all these negative consequences of his actions is just like this long list and it's insane. Travis says, talking strategy does not violate this protective order being read here, which I've read before. I gave an example of above, All right? Thanks. Just looking for comments. Hi, Julie. So many egos, defense, judge, prosecution, law enforcement. I wish they could all just put them aside for the sake of justice. Yes. Yeah, <sighs> Baldwin and Rosie said they want cameras in the courtroom, but this has not been a great, I mean, this is my first case that I've ever really looked into and it's bad all around. Anne says, I love that Prosecutor McClelland is pretty much just keeping his mouth shut, I guess also Luttrell, and letting this play out. They know Rosie and Baldwin were hitting a brick wall. They were, be, uh, they were behaving professional. Well, Sub Rosa says, the prosecution asked the judge to remove the negligent defense lawyers. Apparently, yeah, because... After this photo leak, I, I read the um, emails real quick, but that was like, I think, two weeks ago. It's a crime. Criming shame says, I would say Baldwin broke the rules just like Fortson. Well, what about Mitch, too? Fortson got them from Mitch. Oh, sorry. I don't want to say his name. Sorry. Fortson was the guy who ended his life. Some of these comments. Anne says, Rick's, Rick's Sixth Amendment rights have been violated. Good heavens, he's gotten more lawyers and more special treatment by a factor of 10. 
than any other homicide suspect in Indiana I'd wage. Well, yeah, he has Baldwin and Rosie. Now he has Scremin and Labrado. He also has these, like, what's her name? Wynicky or something like that? I don't know. He has a lot of help. Tiffany with a great question. Why was Gull so, con so concerned with where their cars were? <laughs> she wanted them to get out of there before she dropped the hammer. Did somebody say that Baldwin doesn't have, his car doesn't have reverse or something? I'm just looking for some stuff we have not talked about yet. Travis says, on the question of when motions in chambers in courtroom, the defendant has a right to public trial, including public pretrial matters, so needs to be public. Shelly says, I truly don't understand why Rosie was forced to withdraw. I understand Baldwin, but if Rosie had nothing to do with the leak, then why remove Rosie when it adds another year? I don't understand. I don't know. I, we'll find out what the Supreme Court says. Hi, Molly Lollipops. Nice to see you. Happy Thanksgiving. Ivy Rose, I was confused about her going through all the motions and what she claimed she was planning to talk about in the hearing, knowing she wasn't going to talk about all that. I don't know that that's true. I don't know if she's going to start off with McClelland um, presenting his issues with the leaks, and then they were going to get to all these other motions. So just because that first stuff didn't happen and there was no attorneys for Rick, that's why that later stuff never happened. Give me a minute to find something. <laughs> JH, never seen a case with so many lawyers. It's a shame when the lawyers have lawyers and the judge has a lawyer. I agree. At this point, I think everyone involved should go ahead and hire their own lawyer. And what's going to happen if these other two guys, Labrado and Scremin, are we going to see some drama with them? I don't know. I know at least one of them, Labrado, has some issues in his past. That's not very good. Hi, Paula. Nice to see you. Thank you for your generosity. I really appreciate it. exactly one hour left can i end this now i'm kind of over it <laughs> what else haven't we talked about art of deduction says gross negligence equals baldwin not being honest about the woodhouse leak yeah i mean i agree that that if you know that some guy who's been i think i don't know if brandon woodhouse has been convicted of stuff i know he has a trial coming up fairly soon, or I think, I think, I think it's for drugs. Um, why is Baldwin not informing the judge immediately? Hi CK, isn't gross negligence only used in injury cases? It should be called something else. I don't know. I've never been arrested or sued, so I don't know these terms. <laughs> Kirsten says, Oh, uh, I have something better to do. I'm kidding. Can Rick understand all that is going on? I have not really heard an update on his mental health in quite a few months. 
the judge, or sorry, not the judge, the Westville warden said Rick started exhibiting strange behavior after he got legal paperwork. And it seems like all of this is around the time that Rick called his wife to confess, where he said he killed the girls. Um, what was my other issue I was going to say? Oh, yeah, something about like the safekeeping order. So Rick was transferred, I think he went from Carroll County to White County Jail, and then he went to Westville pretty early on, and I think early November, maybe November 2nd. So then Baldwin and Rosie came on, I think, mid-November. They did not try to get him removed to a county jail until April 5th. So it's like five months later, they were fine with Rick staying at Westville. Rick was fine staying at Westville until he confessed. I don't know. Things that make you go, hmm. Oh my God. Adam, you're in trouble. Yeah, thank you to my moderators. Hopefully people aren't being ridiculous. Um, let's see. <laughs> Hi, Annabelle Stealth. Anna, sorry if I'm getting it wrong. Sixth Amendment, it's going straight to the US Supreme Court. Uh-oh. Venus gal. Did you say a few shows ago that Rick's confessions came right after a meeting with his lawyers? Yes. On April 3rd. No, it's not. That's not true. Give me one second. I might have one other screenshot to share. Well, here, here's like this confession thing. Um, so on April 3rd, this was in from the manifesto thing. It said that April 3rd, Rick met with the intern and the private investigator for the defense. It seems like the timing, I don't know the exact timing if Rick made this call to his wife before or after that meeting, but it seems to me like Rick went from this meeting with the intern and private investigator. He went back to his cell. He has his tablet where he can call his wife. And he had been calling his family up to two times a day since he's been in prison. And this is page 115 of document of the unsealed document 52. I, I know a lot of you have seen this, but some people don't seem to know exactly. They're like, we don't know what Rick said, but prosecutor McClelland said on April 3rd, Rick made a phone call to his wife. In that phone call, Rick admits several times that he killed Abby and Libby. Investigators had the phone call transcribed, and the transcription confirms that Rick admits that he committed the murders of Abby and Libby. He admits several times within the phone call that he committed the offenses as charged, which is felony murder. Oh, yes, felony murder, which is essentially that he's bridge guy. His wife ends the phone call abruptly. Some other legal document, I pasted this number eight, that the defendant has admitted that he committed the offenses that he is charged with no less than five times while talking to his wife and his mother on the public jail phones available at Westville. I mean, I don't know, this doesn't look too good. And as far as I read, um, Rick's defense team met with him again on May 4th, so a month and a day later, and he was asking them, how is my wife? Is my wife okay? Is my family okay? And my assumption from that was that they still had not talked to him for the the next whatever 31 days after his confession or else he would have been able to call his wife and say how are you so i don't know this confession is suspicious to me we're gonna have to wait and hear exactly what he said hi jennifer thank you so much for buying me an apple pie happy thanksgiving to you too For people who are in Europe and half asleep in the middle of the night, Thanksgiving is Thursday in America. Hi, TD. Nice to see you. He's guilty. Bullet matched gun in his house. 
admitted it to his mom guilty. I'm sure I know that the defense has already hired an expert to say that Rick or whatever the ballistics evidence is not valid. I don't know. It seems pretty damning to me that Rick's cartridge unspent round was found within two feet of the bodies of Abby and Libby. I don't know. I've said previously, even if that science of matching whatever unspent rounds to Rick's gun, even if it's only, if it's uh, whatever, sorry, if it's 80% accurate, that means like 20% of people could be falsely sent to prison for the rest of their lives. That's not, that's not right. I don't know what the exact percentage is though, of how accurate this ballistics evidence is. Hi, Michelle. Isn't the judge supposed to make sure the court appointed lawyers are representing Rick correctly? Yes, I, that's what she said. She is doing what she, sorry, she is doing what she should be in response to the defense's negligence and shadiness. Otherwise, Rick sues. And if Rick is found guilty, then he's obviously going to try to appeal. And one of his reasons might be, I felt like my lawyers sucked. I mean, can he suck? I doubt they'd have him sign something saying, okay, well, if you want to continue with Baldwin and Rosie and you're found not guilty, or sorry, if you're found guilty, are you going to appeal and waste more money? I don't know. I, I don't know that Rick is innocent or guilty. I'm waiting for the trial. Tiff says that was shifty about the cameras finally being allowed in the courtroom the day that they got a spanking. I agree, but like, doesn't it also look bad that you're like, please, we want transparency until they get a spanking? Sinbad Sailor is debating. Travis, the lawyer, is wrong. An attorney must maintain confidentiality. They can't discuss strategy with a third party per rule 1.6, confidentiality of information, Indiana rules of professional conduct. I think uh, Travis is in another state. I don't know how they, the rules differ. Anne says, poor little Ricky just can't go with that narrative. He can retain private counsel. The, uh, sorry, with reported sale of his house proceeds. He, uh, his wife sold their house on August 2nd or something for $252,000. Have been wondering how he qualified for state paid counsel anyway. I don't think his wife should be punished for his supposed actions. So I don't think she should have to give up that money just to pay for Rick's attorney. Lynn, thank you for still being here and being a moderator. It would have been a mistrial if they kept Rick's attorneys. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what the Supreme Court of Indiana states. Ivy says, I feel like people are making wrong assumptions that the wrongdoing of defense attorney automatically means the judge can kick them off like an empo employer can fire an employee. Yeah, admittedly, I don't know the exact process. Somebody said previously, if you're trying to be a true crime podcaster, you should be more prepared. I'm not trying to be a true crime podcaster. I only host these live chats. So like people have said, they don't like Reddit. They don't like any of the other people who host live chats about Delphi. So here we are, just random people talking about the case. Yeah, hopefully nobody's fighting. Like, if you are, just ban people. Yeah, my biggest concern, Ra hi, Rachel. I don't think they have any idea who committed this terrible crime. Well, it seems to be like they think that it is Rick. I don't know. We're, we're going to have to wait and see at the trial all their evidence. Um, my biggest concern is if it's not Rick and it's not the Odinist, that means law enforcement knows, has no idea who the hell did this. And it's a, a true cold case. Sh 
Shelley says, from this point going forward, she stated her boundaries, the public needs full transparency or the guise of corruption will always remain. Media in the courtroom, reason for Rosie forced to withdraw, no more theatric pressers. I'm glad I made you smile, Ivy. I don't know, are you forgetting an L to... <laughs> It's something, it, it, I know, I should probably know. Uh, John is his first name. That's the only part I know how to spell. Georgia is not a Tom fan. Yes, and now virtue signaling, like all the self-righteous podcasters who know right and wrong better than we do because they have a platform on YouTube. The simulation, hello, I think I said hi to you two hours ago, kind of unrelated, but is anyone else curious about the connection between money for the task force, new headquarters, trail improvements, and campaign contributions? Um, I don't know how much money they wrote. The new headquarters, it was a previous building, so they're just paying like rent and how expensive is rent in Delphi, Indiana? No shade or anything. Trail improvements, those were a million dollars. I don't know. I don't think there's like some huge conspiracy. But I, I don't know everything about everything, so. I know nothing about nothing. Marge is worried that Rick will start believing he actually didn't do this, and we will never know what happened. I don't know. I just keep, I keep telling myself, we have to wait for the trial and see all the evidence that the prosecution has, because we just don't know. Hi, M. There's like 40 more minutes. <laughs> How much? Uh, all right, let me skip over a bunch of things. Sorry. Let me skip over some more. Sorry, I'm skip. I feel so horrible. Everybody knows I'm just like skipping over 100 comments. Hopefully, they were all about or talking to each other. Mm, hello, Mish. The trial already was already going to be delayed, regardless of this drama. Yeah, I've heard that um, the defense lawyers had a lot of um, other motions that they could have filed just to keep trying to get whatever Rick's search warrant thrown out, in addition to the Frank's memo. So it was unlikely that it would have started on January 8th anyway. Cranky Babushka, Sleuther Vandross Detective Agency would have caught the murderer right away. No, I'm not acting like I'm special or anything at all. But I just don't understand how they missed this 74th tip where Rick said he was on the trails. I don't know. Twinsies. Thank you, Meg. Yeah, when I, I got this today, actually, it's from a website called Spring. I made up a bunch of different products and it was pretty wrinkly, but I used my steamer, at least on the front. If I turned around, it would have like a hundred wrinkles on it. <laughs> Tiff wants a shirt that says, sorry for the awkward silence. Oh my gosh. It's even more awkward when I'm talking. Anyway, the simulation. Barbara McDonald said she had received information about the case from a disgruntled former, sorry, former Carroll County employee, which everybody knows is Mike Thomas. <laughs> He's the guy who ran against Liggett in the sheriff's election and Liggett had 51% of the vote. Hi, Lone Pony. Wait, Ferency, as in one of the detectives was murdered yesterday? No. Ferency was one of the three Odin Report guys who was on the FBI task force. I think it was 
at least over, I don't know exactly, but it was definitely over a year ago. So this Ferency guy was at work, I think at a FBI building and a former corrections officer. I, I don't know this case very well, but this guy was a corrections officer. He was disgruntled. He went to some kind of government building where Ferency was working. He threw a Molotov cocktail, which is like alcohol, and then it has some kind of flame and it bursts into flames. So I guess Ferency came outside to see what was going on. And this suspect shot and killed Ferency. Some people seem to be thinking it's a conspiracy theory related to Odinism, but I don't think so. Shelly says, for six plus years, I've known about the sticks and the F and mostly everything that was leaked. It's not new. Shelly is getting investigated tomorrow. She laughed at that. I heard, I heard you, Shelly. Wampo, yeah. Wampo says, was it confirmed Ferency was murdered by Odinists? No, it's this guy. He was supposed to have his trial, I think, recently, but it got pushed, I think, to February of next year. There's no real known motive from this guy. The simulation says there may not ever be a trial. If Rick unalives himself or someone else does it for him, this will never be settled. Yeah. I, I don't want Rick to be killed. I want him to be healthy mentally and physically and to get a fair trial. Obviously, if Rick gets a fair trial, then so does Abby and Libby. Hi, Annie. Nice to see you. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Thank you for loving me. and. For your generosity i appreciate it and all of your nice comments Anne says something nice but hell no i'm not going to law school and i don't agree that i make great rebuttal points but as i'm sure most of you have seen i try and like think of both sides which i make these spreadsheets with reasons for and against and sometimes i'll have a thought about something and then i'll say no that doesn't really make sense because of this and i try to show my work and stuff or my thoughts Meg says, I don't think Rick Churd, Richard will get a fair trial with Judge Gull. I feel like after the recent documents show the, the court is corrupt, I would hate to see this dude walk if he is guilty. I don't know. It's like how, I don't know. How are we going to get a judge who does everything right and a defense team that does that? Let me skip some more. Jen says, hi, Jen. Doug Carter removed the FBI a while ago. I don't know. I, I just don't understand like how this, all, this investigation was all organized. Like who was seeing all the evidence because it doesn't seem like it was very organized. I don't know. Cranky Babushka. I don't, I forget why the FBI was um, kicked off. Ann says, it'll be interesting if Rick starts meeting with his new attorneys and likes them better than Rosie and Baldwin. I was thinking we have not really heard from these two new attorneys since they got hired, whatever, three weeks ago. Yeah, sorry, I have horrible management of comments. <laughs> Too many people show up. Hi, 400 people. Annie, I don't want to be a lawyer. I want to be a judge and just 
be more mean than Judge Judy. Anything else that we need to talk about? How much more time? 40 minutes or 39. The number keeps going down. Venus says, in my opinion, Baldwin and Rosie are playing a good cop, bad cop thing. Rosie is always innocent, yet staying. Or sorry, yet stayed, despite former issues. And leak guy was to be further fall guy and create the distance. I mean, I'm sure neither of them are too happy with where they're at right now. It's really embarrassing for both of them. Which I mean, people can say, well, it's the goal, judge goal's fault for where they're at right now. Hi, Digital. She had already signed a protective order about how to get evidence to new lawyers, yet was surprised by Rosie and Baldwin's withdrawal. Um, no, are you, are you, I don't know. Was she talking about just the process for sealing or unsealing documents from Rosie and Baldwin? I don't know. And why is it an issue that they don't know the process 11 months after they became Rick's lawyers. I don't know. It seems, I'm just saying in general, the process it doesn't seem to be clear to anybody. Hi, pizza tea. Thank you. You want to go to bed early so I can just click end stream? Cranky Babushka wants to know, who is this Woodhouse guy? He's local. He lived in like Delphi for a while and he got in trouble a lot. And so um, his first name is Brandon. And obviously, Brad Rosie, it's B-R-A, is the first three letters of each of their names. So Baldwin started typing an email with discovery folder names. And he sent it, He, I guess he typed B-R-A, and you can click like whatever, enter or tab to accept the email client or whatever to fill out the full email address. So he clicks send, and I don't know at what point he realized that he sent it to Woodhouse instead of um, Brandon, or sorry, Brad Rosie. Then Woodhouse has now made YouTube videos. He deleted a few of them. He said that Rosie showed up at Carroll County Jail trying to make sure that Woodhouse deleted that email from his computer, which judge gold didn't even mention that part does she even know that part that was really shady at least according to brandon woodhouse hi heather it's okay for us to disagree i don't know i don't know i don't know what to think i i want this trial to happen as soon as possible for everybody involved but if Rick loses, is he going to say, oh, my lawyers were incompetent and any whatever connection that he has to them, he's like, screw that. Like, I want an appeal. I don't know. Shelly thinks the Department of Justice should step in and take over. It's worse than a circus. Yeah, circuses are nice. <laughs> worse than a nightmare. Yeah, the real nightmare I feel horrible for is especially Abby and Libby's families. It's like year after year, they have to wake up wondering who did this and will they ever be found? Will they ever be found guilty? And it's just one day after another. So hopefully some resolution one way or the other is going to happen soon. Son of Liberty, Judge Gall says Tom is not allowed to end the live stream before two hours and 59 minutes. 
She says, this isn't your stream anymore. She'll let you know whose stream it is when she finds a replacement that she feels is suitable. I hope it's not Wom Tepster. Wom Tepster is funny. I don't know who the hell it is, but yeah, I said I'm gonna like force some of you people to host these live chats so you can experience the joy. Cranky Babushka says, I love that name every time. That is crazy. He would confess if he did not do it. Well, some people have said, well, not some people. The defense lawyer said Rick has had depression since his, I think they rephrased it, his early days or early years. And somebody under my manifesto seven hour and five minute video said that people, some people who have uh, depression, they do have these uh, psychosis or delusional, inc not incidents, but episodes. So I don't know, after five months in prison, did Rick have a episode that affected his mental health that caused him to call his wife and say, I killed Abby and Libby? I don't know. It seems weird after like five months, but who knows? And especially right, right after he met with the defense team, I want to know what was discussed in that April 3rd meeting that caused Rick to go back to his cell and confess. Hi, Bernie. Rick needs a social worker. Does he have one already? I don't know. Meg, Tom, can we talk about your first true crime video? Oh my gosh. If only I knew what the future held, I would not have uploaded it. Any other questions? Don't watch it. I watched it back on double speed a few months ago before live chat, and I was not that impressed with myself. ACB, hello. There is a reason that no one has heard of a judge firing the defendant's attorneys before. Rick should be the only one that can do that. Do we really want judges telling PW? I don't know. Cranky Babushka, so maybe his lawyers influenced him to confess. Well, on April 3rd, he met with the intern and the uh, private investigator. So after that point, did Rick's defense attorneys, they went, uh, Baldwin and Rosie, I think, like floored it to Westville the following day on the 4th, where they said he was exhibiting like psych, uh, schizophrenic uh, behavior or something. So has Rick's lawyers ever said, like, why did you confess to your wife? Or did they not ask that question? Have they been telling him repeatedly, we think there is not enough evidence and we can have you fa be found not guilty? And is that why Rick has nev never changed his, uh, whatever, his official plea from innocent to guilty? Kevin has heard that if the judge decides attorneys are grossly negligent, the judge can fine or impression the attorneys, but not disqualify them on their authority. I guess we're going to find out soon about uh, what the Supreme Court of Indiana thinks. Hi, Nikki. Sinbad says, Rosie had joint responsibility for the discovery, but it wasn't just the leak he was cited for. Rosie was involved in the other negligent actions, such as the press release and the tort claim. I know, I need a list of all of uh, Gull's complaints and the defense's uh, reasoning why it's not true. Michelle says they think he was for Rick was forced to confess by guards wearing Odin patches. Yeah, I thought that was total BS. 
like the guards are saying to Rick, first of all, it was a fake quote on page 22 of the manifesto saying that Rick confessed because the guards were, he, whatever, Rick could not like freely say what he wanted in his meetings with his lawyers because he was afraid of the onus guards and that he confessed to his wife because they said that they would kill her if he did not call her and confess. That's, that's no, no, no. <laughs> Hi, Travis. Thank you. Thank you so much for your detailed review of Frank's seven hours and five minutes. I'm only in an hour, in one hour. Now I don't need to read it. Any questions? My answer, watch Tom's epic. Yeah, I spent a lot of time on that, so I appreciate some people watching the entire thing, and I hope you get something out of your time. Watch it on 1.75 speed. I agree with Jen. I'm not buying any of this until I hear voice tone circumstances and transcripts. I agree, but I think the defense or the prosecution, they're not going to lie and like totally say, oh, several times Rick said he killed Abby and Libby when obviously it's going to be played at the trial. So it's not like they're going to lie and what we're going to hear is going to be totally different. Shortisha, that's the first time I've ever seen you. Hi, welcome. Tom is realistic. I don't know about that, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with Sub Rosa. It seems like the defense has been trying to explain away Rick's confessions for the past, whatever, eight months. It's been eight months since Rick confessed to his wife, so I don't know. Ivy, hello. Do we know if the five times was in five separate calls? No, we do not. At the June 15th hearing, they started to reference several letters that Rick wrote to the warden of Westville. And then Rosie was like, no, we're not talking about this. So I don't know if Rick also confessed to the warden in those letters. And people are talking about this uh, other inmate, Robert Baston. He wrote a letter to, actually I have it here, let's see. Is it time for one last PowerPoint slide? Uh, all right, let's do a PowerPoint slide. Less than a half hour. When is my next live chat? It depends what happens with uh, Gull and the Judge Gull and Baldwin and Rosie. This is kind of small to read. So I started to, um, I guess, Recently, this was unsealed, but this is from, I think, last July, possibly, maybe July 5th. So this Robert Baston guy is in Westville for assaulting a six-year-old girl. He has a history of these complaints about law enforcement. He sued the governor of Indiana, saying that he was part of this Baston's guy, this Baston guy's false conviction. And the court was like, yeah, not quite. Nice try. Um, also, he's complained that there was not enough soap in the prison. So he's said that he is in the cell above Rick's. Let me make this a little bit bigger, sorry. He said that Rick is being abused and mistreated by corrupt sergeants, officers, administrative staff and mental health professionals. Although the way he worded it in his letter, his handwritten letter, it really was, was not clear if all those people mistreated Rick or ba Robert Baston. He seems to, he, his letter was like seven pages long. He sent this to Judge Gull and like the majority of it was him complaining about his conditions. Baston's cell was moved because he reported a sergeant trafficked contraband. Then the officers retaliated by putting a dirty mattress in his cell and slammed him to the floor and broke his foot and ankle, stabbed his elbow with a pen and told a nurse not to help, which obviously these are some pretty big claims that make the guards and the prison look bad. However, did he conveniently leave out the part where he wasn't following instructions or he was fighting back? 
they pepper sprayed his cell and made him uh, stand in it for like 10 minutes, breathing the bad air. He was physically, uh, this Basson guy, was physically abused while the warden and a doctor watched. He was removed from his cell and his belongings were taken, taken. And some of those papers had dates and times about Rick being abused and mistreated by staff and officers. His belongings were in the hall and officers and suicide companions took some of those items. He sent in a uh, mail to the New York, New York Times a reporter, but due to corruption, it is not reaching its destination. But I pointed out here, his letter with all of his complaints about uh, Westville reached Judge Gull and is now public. So the corrupt Westville officers did not block this letter. He does not feel safe to testify until inmates can be protected. So he was this Bastion guy is supposed to go to the June 15th hearing for Rick to talk about bad condition, sorry, bad conditions at Westville and also Rick being mistreated. But when the guards came to bring him to, I guess, the Carroll County Courthouse for the June 15th hearing, he refused to leave his cell. He said, quote, I have witnessed Richard M. Allen being abused and mistreated by Westville Correctional Facilities slash Westville Restrictive Housing Unit staff and officers that has affected his health and his mental health, end quote. I, Robert P. Baston, asked this court to report this corruption to the proper authorities to investigate. And when I read that, obviously there's some bad things in there, but where's the letter from Rick saying, I'm being abused by the guards. So why is Rick not going into court and telling Judge Gull, I'm being abused by the guards? I don't know. Thoughts? Son of Liberty, something I have not seen considered. If someone says, quote, they say I killed those girls, and the quote pulled from that is I killed those girls, is that a confession? I just don't trust a state ever. Well, the fake quote, I pointed this out, it said it ended with I killed those girls. So something, I, I forget exactly what it was, but I wondered if the defense was trying to go against that phrase. So are we going to find out at some point that Rick said, I killed those girls? I mean, it seems like if he said it multiple times, it was pretty spe specific. Caricature Contest says, if I was Rick and innocent, I'd record down the hill on a megaphone and let you know. He has not spoken once since he's been arrested uh, almost 13 months ago now. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we're ever going to know, Sub Rosa. Will the defense or will the does the prosecution know exactly what Rick's defense attorneys went to Westville that day to talk to him about and presented him? What kind of discovery had the prosecution given to the defense recently that Rick could have been reading and thought, oh crap, there's no way I'm going to be able to explain this away. So I have to call my wife and finally admit that I killed Abby and Libby. I don't know. Even if Rick does one day say, yes, I did do this. I'll just be shocked that this 44 year old man who worked at the CVS ended up on the trails this, that day and did this. I don't know. Why are people staying up into the middle, middle of the night watching this? We're stopping in exactly 20 minutes. We're at two hours and 39 minutes. Can you make it? Just go to sleep. I don't say anything important. Uh, let's see. Ivy says, I'm sure you can discuss strategy without divulging specific details. But do you really think that Baldwin, who's been friends with this guy, Mitch, for years, he's not 
Like he's saying, okay, I can't tell you specifics. I don't know. Hi, Betty. I want to be that white. It's a dove, I think. Yeah, I wish I was on a beach right now. No offense to anybody. <laughs> Hi, Tessa. Nice to see you. Hi, Miranda. Thank you. We like you too. Uh oh. What, what did I miss? Something happened. Somebody was mean. Mish is still mish i hope i'm pronouncing that right short for michelle i'm still holding out for the other players who acted alongside rick <sighs> if rick's confession is true and he said that he killed abby and libby who else is there i mean i there's a lot of stuff about this that doesn't add up to me in both directions so if it was only rick why is his dna not found at the crime scene Whose DNA is it that they have not been able to match up to anybody? I, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what kind of DNA they have. There's been various comments by law enforcement, but nothing really specific, sorry. Thank you for your comment, Shelly. I'm not gonna highlight it. Marge, hi. I don't know if I saw this before or if I uh, thanked you, but thank you. Deb, you're still here. Thank you for reading for reading before. Meg, I do think these other people are involved. I grew up in Rushville, which is where some of these men are from, and know all three of the men named from here. No shock here. Do you think that EF really has uh, the mentality of a seven or eight year old? His confessions to his sisters were highly suspicious, but police never arrested him. Thank you, Sabrosa. Kirsten wants to know, is it true that police are allowed to lie to the public? Yeah, sure, why not? No. <laughs> I mean, they say that police are allowed to lie in interrogations to suspects. It's not a good look if you're lying to the public. But I guess sometimes they have to do what they feel like they have to do to solve a case, which it didn't work for five and a half years in this case. Mish, Sleuther Vandro's tagline needs to be never too much true crime. That's a good song by Luther. Sub Rosa will bite on the wildest of conspiracy theories, but I draw the line with this Odinist conspiracy. I mean, looking at some of it did start to make sense to me or like seem like it could be a possibility. But as I looked into it more, it became less of a possibility. <laughs> Hi, Tigress. How in the world could they miss the cartridge too? That's nuts. So the unspent round, there's a rumor that it was not found for, I don't know, some people say days, but I don't know if Rick, if it, if Rick is bridge guy and he was the only person there and he staged the crime scene, did he drop this cartridge at some point? And as he's walking around the bodies, did it fall under some like leaf or something? And by stepping on it, it pushed it into the ground further. And it took a few days for law enforcement to turn over every leaf and look through each, like not whatever, not each piece of grass, but the crime scene was fairly large, so 
I imagine it took a few days to process. I don't know. Hi, KT. I want a burp count ticker t-shirt. Yeah, today we're at three, I think. Travis says, wait until the trial. All the evidence is in. What a novel concept. I think you are really onto something here. Well, I mean, some people say that they think they're that Rick is 100% innocent. Some people say they're sure he's 100% guilty. But we have not seen all the evidence yet. So I don't think anybody should be saying they're 100% certain. Meg says, Todd Click is a great friend of mine. He was one of the Rushville officers investigating I do not discuss the case with him, but I put 100% faith in everything he has or will say. He is a good guy. Yeah, I just don't know if, I don't d doubt anything that they included in the Odin report or the Click report. However, I just don't know that they have those guys, the th three guys had access to everything that the Unified Command had access to. And they, the, at least one of those guys, Click, I think, admitted that. Or maybe it was Murphy. Marge says, not taking the blood on the tree and branches as evidence. Yeah, I agree. I think Barbara McDonald said they left the uh, law enforcement, left the branches just out in the woods after they took them off the bodies. I don't know where they're going to put them, but don't you think they should examine the entirety of them? Yeah, on, sometimes I've been on work uh, video conferences and somebody says, Tom, it looks like you froze on your camera. And I said, no, sometimes I just don't move for like 25 seconds. <laughs> Marge, screwing up the Marathon gas station retrieval. So Marathon gas station is in Delphi. They had a video and I guess the murder sheet at one point said the FBI took the hard drive from the video camera surveillance, but something got screwed up and they were not able to access the actual video. I don't know. I am very interested to see this 127 Hoosier Harvester camera video where the defense, or sorry, the prosecution says a car resembling Rick's is headed towards CPS at 127. So. And that's going to either determine if Rick is telling the truth that he was there at the trails noon to 130 or if he arrived at 128. Also, I want to see any other local footage that shows Rick's car going to CPS or the trails at noon and returning home around 130. Or is there more that's going to show Rick going through Delphi? whatever at 4 11 pm where it's gonna be like uh how are you gonna you gonna explain that away is that what rick saw on april 3rd and he's like there's no way i can explain my car heading home at 4 11. i'm just giving an example but we won't know until the trial generally jenny hello we can't overlook judicial and prosecutorial misconduct because we believe Rick is guilty and we want him put away. The system is designed for all of us. If it fails him, it can fail any of us. I, I agree. And when, I, since, I mean, I've said before, like, I don't know for certain if Rick is innocent or guilty. And even though I, whatever, point out what I think are problems with the defense team, I'm not just doing that because I think Rick might be guilty. Sub Rosa says the FBI denies having messed up the gas station footage. Thank you, Shelly. I appreciate it. <laughs> Son of Liberty. 
FBI denies all sorts of things that the FBI does. Want to be a judge and just judge. Hi, HB. Want to be a judge and just judge. How much more time? Exactly nine more minutes. We're almost done, people. I think I need to go to like one hour and 59 minute videos. Generally, Jenny says, I think Rick knows what's going on. He has lots and lots of free time to think about this stuff. I'm curious to know exactly how much of his discovery he's reading and it might sound stupid, which is on brand for me. Is he taking notes like this does not make sense? Or if he is truly guilty, is he just like, yeah, there's no point in reading this stuff. I'd be interested to know. Meg, if we find out Kagan is not involved in this somehow, I'm never watching true crime again. Yeah, some people don't want to move on from Kagan. I don't know if we'll ever know the answer. But it's, I mean, the defense did not reference Kagan or Ron Logan one time in their manifesto. I searched their names. So don't you think if the defense was trying to point away from Rick and his guilt, don't you think they would have thrown Kagan and Ron in there if there was any kind of evidence in discovery? It does not seem like there was. And Nick McClelland said he does not think that the prosecution has any exculpatory evidence for Rick. So I don't know. How far are we behind am I? Um, let me skip a bunch. Sorry. <laughs> Sub Rosa, Rick wears a men's shoe size 6.5. That's tiny little feet. Well, the defense said he's five foot four, which kind of seemed to be like they were trying to act like he's so short he couldn't have crossed Deer Creek. But Abby and Libby were, were both five foot four. I've seen like a document that was filed. It was just text. Um, and it said Rick's height was five foot four, but some of his mug shots showed about five foot six or five foot seven. So I don't know if he was five foot four when he got his license and he just never up updated it. I don't know. Hi, Jay. Since Rick never waived his right to a speedy trial, how can they justify his trial? So sorry, I need a nap. How can they justify his trial not being held in a reasonable time frame? I don't know. Anybody else know? Travis wants to know, does anybody know what the spousal privilege is in Indiana? Um, as far as I've heard, Rick's um, phone call to his wife, since it's recorded, and I think everybody is warned that what you're about to say is being recorded, it will be able to be uh, presented at trial. Thanks for not lurking and hi to your cat. Six minutes. Hi, Lala. Robert Baston was smart enough to get his complaints published to a worldwide audience. Rick was a side note for his own complaints. I, I agree. He's been complaining for a long time. I think, hi, Jay, you might want to up that to like a 30 ring circus. I don't even know what the rings are, but anyway. <laughs> Son of Liberty is being sarcastic, I think. Government never lies. When the government tells you about babies and incubators, um, I should need to read this stuff first. Okay, don't. Son of Liberty says, don't believe the government or Tom.
Yeah, I, I, I lick my lips way too much. Sorry if it's annoying to anybody. It's annoying to me. I didn't know it until I watched back my live chat. Anyway. Looking for some final comments in the last four minutes. Yeah, so my new thing is I do not go over three hours. So this is going to have an abrupt end in four minutes. <laughs> Hi, show. Hey, Amamura. Can you guys like all change your name to Jenny and Matt? Is this the uh, baseball player? Shohei Amamura still thinks the clients are involved. Thank you, Betty. You're sweet. Hi, Stacy. Stacy also thinks the clients were involved. Guess who I'm talking to this weekend? Next, DC said. Kevin, you're still with us. We're almost done. DC said in the 2019 press conference, the older guy sketch, I'm oh, sorry, the older guy in sketch one is no longer a person of interest. Then they unveiled the younger guy sketch, which doesn't even look like bridge guy. This to me is the defense's dream. So the whole thing seemed to be, they put out the older guy sketch, which it did match Rick in general age range and a goatee at, in February, 2017 they weren't able to find anybody in two years and witness four went to law enforcement on her own and said you guys i told you the guy i saw from 50 feet away on platform one he looked like he was 20 with poofy hair which later she said okay maybe he's as old as early 30s um so it seemed like law enforcement kind of said okay well we haven't had any we have not had any luck with the older sketch, maybe we need to try the younger guy sketch. So that never led to the arrest of a 20 year old either. So I don't even know what to think about some of this stuff. Jay says, typically they use a metal detector who would have found the bullet pretty easily. All right. Thank you. One more comment. Cause I'm stopping in two minutes. Thank you to all my moderators. Thank you to people staying up in Europe into the middle of the night. Thank you to people who were polite to each other. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I don't know if I'm doing another comment. I have one more minute. Any final comments? KT, movie recommendations for Thanksgiving. Planes, trains, and automobiles. One of my favorite uh, movies is Airplane. I love Airplane. Hi, Mary. Nice to see you. If you want this shirt, it's in, available in the store below. One minute. So my next live chat is um, whenever something big happens, I guess. All right. We're almost at 2.59. As soon as it happens, I'm... Xing out. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your um, thoughts. I don't know. I don't know if we have another year of this or not. I just feel horrible for the families. Also, Rick, if he's innocent, spending another year in a cell is not a good thing. His family also. So let's keep in mind not only Abby and Libby, but their family members who have to experience this nightmare day after day. We're at two hours and 59 minutes. Can you wish me a happy birthday? You got it in before I click close. Oops, highlight. Happy birthday to Blue. All right, before I start singing, bye.